Hi, friends. Holy shit. What a night. What a goddamn night. We've got so much to talk about tonight. We have so much to talk about. Seriously, it's a never-ending, never-ending content mine here in Israel. My God, was the night crazy. Crazy, crazy night. Um, let me just, uh, let me settle in here real quick. I got some things to pull up that I want to talk to you guys about and welcome everybody to the stream. Thank you all for being here. I am coming to you live. Um, I'm coming to you live. Uh, pretty tired. I uh, didn't really sleep last night considering the situation, uh, which is understandable, I think. Um, it was a very tough situation last night, and uh, a lot of us didn't know what was going to happen. And that's always a bit scary when you don't know what's going to happen. We're going to talk about it in just one second. Um, welcome, everybody, to the stream. Welcome, one and all. Thank you all for being here. I love you all. It's good to, it's good to see you guys here. Um, I'm curious to hear from you. How was your experience watching the news? I know I made a community post that came off as maybe a little bit, a tad bit dramatic. Um, but to be fair, I genuinely didn't know what was going to happen yesterday. I had no idea. I thought there was a chance that we, we might lose communication with the outside world for a little bit. And uh, I didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, let me button up one button here. Uh, folks, let's, let's, um, let's open up with saying thank you all. I survived Iran's attack. If you guys haven't seen the video I made on Instagram, I highly recommend you check out my Instagram at the traveling clad to uh, see a summary of what the experience was like. 80 people here right now. Thank you to all the members who are here. Thank you to Shane, our moderator, who's probably gonna be in and out today. Please let me know where you guys are watching from right now. And I want to just go, go out and say thank you to all the people who are watching, who are members. Um, Natasha's here. June is here. Shayna's here. Den is here. BT's here. Hannah's here. Betsy, Queen Betsy's here. BT's here. Mars Mello is here, of course. Terry Bogard is here. Sida Viblis is here. Uh, uh, my mom. Okay, that's everyone. So thank you guys all for being here. Uh, yeah, last night was an intense experience, a uh, pretty intense experience. I've got some footage on my iPhone, which is, oh, I'm, I'm filming with it. I can't show you guys it. Um, yes, my family, Baruch Hashem, my family is okay. Um, nobody really slept last night. I'll, I think we'll start with, we'll walk through the entire experience. But I wanted to say I'm working together with um, the hostage forum today to provide you guys with. Um, I know I know a lot of you guys who are watching maybe uh, Jewish or celebrating the pass the holiday of Passover. I know that some of you guys may not be, but the hostage forum, the official hostage forum uh, here in Israel, has constructed an incredible movement. Um, to commemorate the hostages that are being held in captivity right now with Hamas um, over this Passover. Obviously, for those of you guys who don't know, the holiday of Passover is all about us freeing captivity from our oppressors, which was Egypt. And the Hostage Forum has provided me with a custom link that you guys can click on right here that will allow you to buy a Passover Haggadah, so the story of Passover in theme with commemoration to the hostages that are currently in Gaza. Um, it's a beautiful piece. I know the people behind the project personally, and they're not only are they being a massive help to the channel, but they're doing incredible work on the ground. Like stuff, you know, I, I create content and I do stuff here, but in some aspects, a lot of what I do is very um, selfish. So the pinned comment that's gonna be at the pin, it's gonna be at the top of the stream the entire time. I'll talk about it a few times during the stream for the people who are coming in. Please, 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 if you guys are interested, click on that link. It's a custom link that's mine. So they'll know they'll know who's they'll know that viewers of clat clat people are, are clicking on this link and and buying the Haggadah. But um I really uh, I think it would be an amazing thing, especially if you want to uh if you want to um commemorate the incredible uh organization of the hostage forum and uh, support 
um, support the movement of keeping the memory of these hostages alive as we seriously don't know what's going to be happening with them. All right, so that's just something I wanted to say. 115 people in here. Thank you all for joining. Again, I apologize if my energy is a bit low. Yesterday was a freaking traumatic night. Um, in a lot of ways, in some ways, it was hilarious. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us are still kind of confused on what's going to happen. Um, you can't click on the link. Why is that? I'll paste. Maybe I should. I'll paste the link in here. Uh, in thing, does that work? Um, I'm not really sure how else I can uh, get you guys the link. But that is the link. That's my link. Please, please check it out as well. If anybody who wants to, um, if anybody wants to, uh... oh, salamu alaikum for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. If anybody wants to call into the stream a little bit later, um, we have our Discord link ready and available for you guys to join and call in. And I would absolutely love to hear from you guys, especially with what is going on and what you guys experienced or felt or thought yesterday in Iran. Why are you guys saying the link is not working? When I click on it, it seems to work. I wonder why. Maybe it's because you guys are watching on the phone. Could be. Um, getting server not found. Oh, maybe it's not available. It could be only available for people in the UK, US, and Israel. Potentially. I'm not sure. But whoever whoever wants to support the hostage forum... They're amazing, man. And they what they're doing for the hostage families is unbelievable. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know the tents that they have set up around Israel. Um, that they offer like free coffee, free tea for the hostage families, places for them to come talk. It's it's actually like amazing. Because the, the shit that the people who are... Who, imagine with the Iranian attack of what happened last night and having a kid who's hostage in Gaza or a family member who's hostage in Gaza on top of that trauma. Yesterday was a tough night for everybody in the country. Every And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. It doesn't matter if you're Muslim or if you're Jewish, you're Arab, you're Israeli. It doesn't matter who you were. Yesterday was a tough night for everyone. It was a very, very tough night. Um, should we start? How, how do we start? Last time I saw you guys was Thursday. Um, last time I saw you guys was Thursday. And we spoke about... I don't even remember what we spoke about in the last stream. But... We mentioned that there was a very high potential that um, Iran was going to do something because they'd been talking about it for two weeks. And um, I'm going to post a link to the Discord, by the way. If anybody wants to come in, argue with me, talk to me, join the Discord. So we were, we were talking about a potential attack on Iran. And or a potential attack from Iran to us. And it was so weird because it was like being broadcasted so openly for so long about what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. But it wasn't clear. And then last night when Shabbat came out, I remember I was sitting at an Ethiopian restaurant with my friend. We were eating some dinner. We were about to say bye to each other. So yesterday I woke up. I, I hung out with my friends from the Philippines. A bunch of my friends from the Philippines were here in Israel and we, we had a meetup somewhere close to northern Israel together. Um, we all got together. We had a great lunch. We like sat down. We we're talking, catching up. We all sort of tossed around the idea that something could potentially happen tonight. Aloha, Veronica. Aloha. Please, everybody, let me know, by the way, where you're watching from. I didn't even I didn't say hello to everybody. Please let me know where you're watching from right now. Um, but yeah, we were thinking about the idea that potentially something could happen a little bit later tonight. Uh, that was yesterday. And we had no idea. We had no idea. Yeah, Elizabeth, I feel like I can't stop yawning. Oh, so sorry. I didn't, Iran kept me up last night. There was fucking bombs everywhere. <laughs> I didn't go to sleep till 5 a.m. Um, so, okay, let's first, let's first of all say hello to everybody. Mars Mello is watching for Manchester. Jay is watching for Florida. Corey Cook watching from Northern California. Babak is Persian watching from US. Shane is from New Jersey. Shane, we got to get some merch out your way. Sorry, it's been crazy. We've been busy with the Iranians bombing me. I didn't have a chance to send you some free merch because you're so lovely and we love you. I promise I'm going to try to do it this week. Um, Love is watching from Boston. Leia is watching from Amisrael Chai. <laughs> Hannah is watching from Finland. Elizabeth is in Carmiel. Nimrod's watching from the Philippines. Magnum's watching from... Hi, Shayna. 
Um, Sida Biblis is watching from Jahannam, NYC. Um, Gombucha is watching from Singapore. Okay, la. Dr. H.C. is grown is watching from Germany. June's watching from Nova Scotia. Atega is watching from Switzerland. Teresita is watching from London. Ali Hussein's watching from Iraq. Wow, you guys had an interesting night last night too, Iraq. Did you did you have some action last night, um, uh, Ali Hussein, or what part of Iraq are you from? Hello, everybody. Hello, BDOB. 143 people, man. BTs, California, Portugal. God, this is so lovely. So lovely having you all here. Thank you. It's nice that I get, it's such an honor that I get to experience something so crazy like what I experienced yesterday. And then hop out. Hey, Israel Tavor, you're definitely calling in today, huh? I want to. I want you to call in. You're going to be telling us your experience with yesterday's uh, yesterday's Iranian attack on Israel. All right. And anybody, I remind you guys, anybody who wants to call in, please join our Discord link. Script. It's. I just popped it in. I would love to hear from you guys. Anyways, to recount the events of last night, Shabbat came out around five uh, six p.m. And already there were warnings coming in that school and work and everything's going to be closed down tomorrow, which is today. Um, we were all preparing for something horrible. <sighs> Sorry, I'm so tired. Um, so my mom called me up. She was like, go home. Like, get, get to your house. Because I was walking around Tel Aviv. From, I was getting from the restaurant back to where I'm staying right now. And um, then I got a call from my dad. My dad was like, are you sure you want to stay in Israel? I was like, well, I can't leave. Like, especially with what I'm doing right now. I was like, I can't, I can't leave. That would be breaking any, you know, that would be breaking exactly the, you know, the whole point of the content that I'm creating right now. I actually got a bunch of, of viewers, kind of viewers like you guys who messaged me, really worrying about me, whether I was going to be okay, which was really, um, thank you. Thank you for having my back and for wondering about me and uh, and for uh, hoping, like, for wishing that I'll be okay. And, yeah, it's very, very nice of all of you guys. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you for the concern. It's very heartwarming. Um, anyhow, uh, I'm trying to recount exactly how it went. I started running home. I walked all the way here from, like, northern Tel Aviv to... South of Tel Aviv, where I'm at now. And then right as I got home, I started showering. I think it was around like 10 p.m. The first reports came in. It was like Iran has officially launched drones. It was the first thing. It was like a, a wave of drones is going to hit Israel in seven to eight hours. And the thing that I fucking love about Israel, the thing that I fucking love about the people of this country, immediately... Like, immediately there were memes and jokes happening about Iran. Like, people were trolling Iran and making fun of Iran from the first moment that we knew we were going to get attacked. I was like, damn, if we're all going to die tomorrow, we're going down swinging. Like, we are going down. How can I explain it to you? Israelis are already a type of people that are, um, they have a sort of, like, fuck you mentality. Like, they don't, Israelis don't give a shit about anything. I think because a lot of people here are so traumatized from life in general and just having to deal with the fact that everybody wants to kill them all the time, that like people here are just kind of desensitized to everything. And it, it just makes for a very funny society. We call it in Hebrew, the concept is called dachkot. It's like, it's like it, people, it, people here just don't take things very seriously. And, and people ha and Israelis have a very, very dark sense of humor. Um, so immediately, like, I'll show you guys some of the first things that I got. I was getting, man, I had one thing that killed me. Like one of my friends sent me on WhatsApp. He made a sticker. Um, <laughs> I kind of send you guys. I wish I could send you guys stickers in the chat. It was so funny. My friend who is a soldier, he sent me. Let me see if I can do this without. Oh, I don't want to show it to you guys, though. How do I do this? I don't know how I'm going to show this to you guys. I'll try to cover names and numbers here. Ah, I can't show it. Okay, never mind. It was a sticker of an Iranian drone. Damn, 210 people in here. Holy shit. Hello, everybody. Um, there was a sticker going on of it, like a picture of an Iranian drone, and it said nine hours. Well, let me see what it said exactly. 
It said, uh, in Hebrew it says, Yatsati Tesha Shot Tzlecha, which means like, I'm leaving my house, I'm going to be at your place in nine hours. It, I know it's, explaining the joke is not really funny, but, oh uh, man, it was fucking hilarious. When I got done, I was like, what the fuck, man? Already people are making jokes. And then there was, there was just like a bunch of videos of people making jokes about how slow. <laughs> <laughs> like mind you we're all freaking the fuck out we're all like the whole country is like the sh streets were getting closed like everybody was out that night and things slowly started shutting down everybody was like freaking out like what the fuck is gonna happen what the fuck is gonna happen and then like everybody in the group is everyone's just memeing on each other the one that made me die the one that made me laugh so hard was this one so we have i forget his name we have the guy who, who comes on. I think it's, his name is Malik Regev. I think that's his name. He comes on the news and he gives us updates about the war every day, about what's going on in Gaza, the operations and whatever. Um, it was just an edited picture of him. And then in Hebrew, the caption says, Kulan olchim lamut. <laughs> Which means we're all, we're all going to die. <laughs> and I send it to my family group chat. <laughs> With my, with my mom and my sister and my aunt, <laughs> they, were, they were freaking out. They were like, what? <laughs> I was like, this is fucking hilarious. That shit was so funny. <laughs> In like this moment of panic, I just imagine my people of this country are just fucking taking the piss out of it. Like Iran... I must have. I must assume that in Iran, it was like, at least from the IRGC's perspective, it was like, we're fucking, yeah, like, fuck yeah, like, we're fucking launching all these rockets and these drones, and there's never been an attack like this ever. And all us motherfuckers are sitting here, we're scared, but laughing, like, everybody's making jokes. Everyone was making jokes. There's, I'm gonna show, I wanna give one more shout out to another one. There's a guy, his name is Moshe um, Kolsia. He's gotten really popular during the war. He's a, he, he's been a soldier. He's a singer. He, you'll only really understand him if he's if he's in Hebrew. But I kind of I want to show you just a quick snippet from his video because it's so okay for context. Iran fired rockets at Jerusalem at the fucking Al Aqsa Mosque. Like it, they were they were stopping Israel was stopping. The irony, we'll talk about this throughout the stream. It's gonna be a long stream tonight. But the fucking irony of Iran. I'm pretty sure they have a brigade in the IRGC called the Aqsa Brigade, like specifically quoting Jerusalem. And they fired fucking rockets, intercontinental ballistic missiles at Al-Aqsa Mosque, at literally the place this whole fucking war is supposedly taking place because of. I was like, who the fuck? When I saw the videos, I was like, who the fuck? How do you, how do you coordinate this badly? I get it. This is what happens when you support Russia and China and you're like underfunded and you're doing shit, cutting corners around everything. But like, what the fuck? How do you get to this position? And then Palestinians in Al-Aqsa Mosque cheering, cheering for this, for the celebration of firing rockets at them. We'll talk about this more too. We're going to go through the events of the night, but like literally the only people, holy shit, almost 300 people on live tonight. Holy fuck. That we're gonna break a record tonight. 286 people, that's amazing. The only people who are affected by this event, truly, the only people are Palestinian people. It fell in one, the only rocket that landed and hit somebody fell into a, or there's two, one in a Palestinian village called Umm al-Fakhin, where nobody got injured, God bless. And then in another one called uh, near outside of Rahat or outside of Arad in the south, who hit a 10 year old, or a seven-year-old Benwin girl, a Muslim Arab girl. Holy shit, 300 viewers on the stream. We broke a record tonight, guys. Holy shit, my God, thank you all for being here. One Bedouin girl was injured, critically injured. She's still in the hospital till today. Eight members of her family were injured as alongside of her. The irony of launching rockets at Jerusalem in protection of the Palestinians and then hitting a Bedouin girl, hitting a Muslim girl, and injuring eight other Muslim people. This is a failure, but like an embarrassing failure. 
for and, and I, it's not just an embarrassing failure for Iran, but it's an embarrassing failure for the Muslim world, for the whole Ummah, the whole Ummah. And I, those of you guys who are Muslim who are watching, I, I beg you to, you know, engage with me on this. You guys can join our Discord, by the way. You can engage with me on this. If you don't believe, we're going to do calls later the, in the middle of the thing. If you don't try, if you think that I'm making a bullshit, if I'm just talking shit, this is one of the most embarrassing stains, in my opinion, on Islamic society since the de 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 degradation of Islamic society in the last, I would say, 800 years. This is like, this is going to be a stain that is so embarrassing for Islam as a whole. And the fact that there are so many Muslims embracing what happened. We'll get into it a little bit more. This was Moshe who I wanted to give a shout out to. <laughs> so you see like while it was very scary and it, we because we didn't know what was going to happen like everybody was sort of taking the piss like we were kind of like everybody was a bit like all right this all right iran just fucking ruin our night and then and we'll get on with our shit tomorrow you know like anyways We'll get into the experience, but the fact that I have 300 people here, I want to give a shout out again. Um, also, wait, first of all, people have been donating super chats. I want to say thank you. So Elsie wrote, Iran, American, please don't attack us. LOL. LOL. <laughs> thank you for the $2. Elsie, I don't think Iran's going to be watching this stream. And if they do, they're probably not um, supporting. Uh, Mike Nogo Zone says, just saying hello to everyone from Miami. Hey, Mike, thanks for being here, brother. Another two dollars from it and fourteen Z A R, which I don't remember what it is. I'm Israel Chai. Oh, that's South African Rand. Okay, thank you so much, buddy. Thanks, Jax. Thanks. It's good to see some South Africans who still support Israel because um, your government has lost its fucking marbles. And Hannah just gifted five memberships. God bless you, Hannah. Thank you so much. We always need those members joining our family here. Um, guys, I wanna I wanna tell you guys about real quick before we continue the story. Because I haven't really gotten a chance to speak about it yet. But we have 300 people here, which is crazy. I'm working with the Hostage Forum to promote a product that they have coming out uh, for Pesach. And today is the last day that you can order it. Mm -hmm. It's called the Passover Haggadah um, in honor of the hostages. I just dropped a link right now into the, uh, into the chat. Please click it and buy or donate to the cause. They are honoring the hostages that are currently in Gaza. For those of you guys who don't know... Passover is the Jewish holiday where we escaped captivity in Egypt. It's a Jewish tradition. And the hostages right now are being are in captivity in Gaza, obviously. And they're not going to be able to celebrate with their families. Um, those of them who are still alive, unfortunately. And, um, well, I would really appreciate if you donated to this cause. I'm working with them and the people behind it are amazing. Um, I'd appreciate it if you had during your Passover Seder this, this holiday, if you guys had a uh, Seder from the hostages. It would be amazing as well. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, I want to shout them out. I'll shout them out a few more times during this stream, but they're amazing. And they're the people who are behind it are helping me continue to make content for you guys. They're, they're supporting me actually. They're really supporting me. And so this is a way for me to return the favor. Um, I truly, truly believe in the product and it's so cool. And it's, it's amazing that they're honoring the hostages the way that they are. And it's uh, very, very real, this idea of being in captivity during Passover, which no Jew should be. Um, but that was our, you know, that, that's our, our history. Our history. Um, thank you to LE for gifting five memberships to the fam over here. Thank you so much. Um, okay, let's, let's do one more shout out. Guys, I'm going to drop a link to the Discord. Please join the Discord. If you want to engage with me, you want to discuss with me, you want to argue with me, whatever it is, you're open to come have a conversation with me a little bit later on. We're going to do calls. Please, please, please join our Discord and we'll do some calls later tonight. Okay. Here's the situation. Last night I was chilling. The warning started coming in and then I came out to the balcony. They said it was going to be seven to nine hours when the drones were going to start hitting it all started happening a lot faster. It was around 1 a.m. when the first rockets, I started seeing them. I'll show you guys what I initially saw. I'll just show you guys a video that I filmed. Um, 
I don't know exactly what I'm filming right now, but there are explosions in the sky over Tel Aviv. I've been watching them silently for the last couple of minutes. I saw one here earlier when a plane went by. And then over here pointing towards the north. I'm waiting for the sirens to come on and they aren't coming on. There it is. What, what is that? What's that going to be? Oh, I heard it explode. So I, I don't know exactly what I was looking at from here in Tel Aviv. No sirens went off in Tel Aviv, by the way, just so you guys know. There wasn't a single siren that I heard here. But, um, but I did see the whole night. I could see a view of the West Bank from my building that I'm in right now. So when I was looking at the West Bank, it was just nonstop. Like the light, the, the sky was just. This is around 1 a.m. And then in Tel Aviv, looking north towards Netanya, I saw, I was seeing like a lot of things getting flown up into the sky, these long things. And then there, there were some weird moments. So Israel shut down its airspace around 1 a.m. if I remember, or no, it was at 12. But so before that, it was every 15 minutes, there's usually a plane that lands. Today, there has been no planes. I don't know. I guess all the airlines just haven't landed today. They canceled all the flights in today. But before that, it's like around every 15 minutes, there's a plane that lands in Israel. They shut down the airline. No more planes were landing or they shut down the airspace. And so also Jordan shut down their airspace. Egypt shut down their airspace. Everybody was shutting down their airspace. Um, and, uh, and then every once in a while, I would see these fucking massive planes that were low flying. They were like commercial airlines. 315 people on the stream. Holy shit. Thank you guys for being here. Amazing. Everybody join our Discord if you want to engage with me. We'll do some calls later. Um, please join the Discord. I just dropped a link in. Um, so I, I would see, I was looking up at the sky and, it, and the clouds were really low yesterday. And I saw these big planes coming through. 336 people on the stream. Holy fuck. Um, this is a big record for us tonight. This is amazing. Um, I would see these massive planes that were busting through the clouds. And then I was looking up. This was right at the big time when I st it, everything was popping off and I was looking at the news as well. And uh, I saw a freaking explosion right next to the wing of the plane. And I was like, what the hell am I looking at right now? I, I had no idea what it was. I just saw this like, Poof, and then I heard it like, Poof, 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 like you hear it. And I don't know why when I film it on the camera, it doesn't, uh, it, it really doesn't come up really well. But the whole, the whole night, till around 3, 4 a.m., I was hearing. And then the reports started coming in that the, that the only landfalls that happened were one army base down south, like a little building got hit. Um, and then obviously there was a big hit outside of Ra or outside of Arad, uh, which is a predominantly Arab-Israeli area, um, Palestinian area. And then that family... Uh, the girl who's uh, critically injured on her deathbed, pretty much, and eight other members of her family who are um, injured as well, um, and uh, and so I just ended up staying up most of the night, um, sitting there uh, with the camera ready to film because I was kind of making a vlog. I wanted to see what I could film. I realized that the footage wasn't interesting enough because it was mostly me on my balcony, just kind of like shocked at what I was looking at, and. Um, and yeah, that, that was it. I'm, by the way, guys, I see the chat's moving super quick. It's a good way to support the channel. If you drop a super chat, I'll be able to read your comments. Whatever it is, please feel free. It's a great way to support the channel, but also it'll be a lot easier for me to read because there's just too many comments going in right now. It's very hard. Um, and there we go. Israel Tavor right on time with a super chat. Six Jekyll, Am Israel, still chai. Hell yeah, baby. We still out here. Um, 365 people in the stream. We're breaking records tonight. 366. Crazy. Um, so let me read you guys a little bit of the statistics. Please feel free to drop in some questions. If you have any questions on the, uh, on what I experienced last night and what you, if you have any questions about what's going on, I was following the news very, very closely. And, um, there's a lot that I want to talk about. My brain is going to be a little bit chaotic but I have the exact statistic of what was launched at Israel. But yeah, feel free if you guys have any questions or anything you want me to answer, drop them, super chat. It'll go a long way to support the channel. It will help me out very much. So Iranians regime's attack on Israel. This is from Stand With Us. They quoted to have been um, 
170 plus attack drones. So the reports in the beginning said that there was 15. No, no, sorry. The first reports were 50. 5-0. There was 5-0 of attack drones that were coming in. So we were all like, what the fuck? What's going to happen? And then there was another, it was like wave two, tw uh, another 50. And wave three, another 50. So we were expecting three simultaneous waves that were coming in. One was coming from the north, one was coming from the south. One was going to come in through Lebanon and Syria. The other was supposed to come in through Jordan and the south. Terra 12 just dropped us $27.99 Canadian. Thank you so much. He says, thank you for keeping us uh, updated. Love out of BC, Canada. Thank you so much. Love back to you in Canada. $26 on the, on the Super Chats on the stream today. Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so, so that was the first statistic. It was 170 plus attack drones, 120 plus ballistic missiles. That was the thing that freaked me out the most. In the beginning, to explain to you how the news was coming in, the news started with the drones and then they laid out to us when they were going to hit us. So they started by telling us that the drones were going to hit us first. And then they said seven to nine hours. So we're all like, I'm walking around the house. I'm pacing. I'm like, what the fuck's going to happen? I called up Barack. Me and Barack were thinking, like talking on the phone um, from the YouTube channel. Other Barack. I was talking to Revital from the um, Indian and Israel channel. I was like, what do we do? Are we making content? What's going on? Barack was like down on the street because he doesn't have a bomb shelter in his building. So I was like, oh, fuck. Are they going to make some content? It was, it was a very like... Everybody was sort of like, all right, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I, I Immediately, I, in moments of crisis, to ease my anxiety, instead of getting scared or freaked out, I just, um, I, what's it called? I usually go into work mode. And uh, that's what I did. I don't know how many of you guys have been watching me for a long time. But if you watch my channel for a long time, you would know I, I made a series in the Philippines when I survived the super typhoon. And one of the things that kept me sane while I was um, while I was making that was talking to you guys, like talking to my friends, talking to people on camera. I would like pull up the camera and document what I was going through. So yesterday was the same concept. I, was fil I filmed the whole experience. And so it came in, the first news was the drones. And I was like, all right, seven to nine hours, we'll deal with it in the morning where we can all go to sleep. This was like around 1, 1 a.m. And then the next one came in with cruise missiles which are the ones that are supposed to, if I remember correctly, the cruise missiles are the ones that fly really low and uh, they're hard to detect by radar and they do a lot of damage. But then the really scary ones were in the inter intercontinental ballistic missiles. The cruise missiles, they said they would arrive in two hours. So that's when everybody set the time frame for um, one or 2 a.m. Everybody was like, all right, one or 2 a.m., shit's about to go down. And then the inter inter -ballistic continent intercontinental ballistic missiles was the one people were talking about that takes... 12 minutes and when the first reports came out of that i was like holy fuck this is all moving so fast they told me 30 minutes ago attack drone seven to nine hours now we have two hours now we have 10 minutes and i was like what the hell's gonna happen the icbms yeah that's what it was but i'm happy to say israel defense forces in conjunction with israel in conjunction with u.s in conjunction with jordan in conjunction with saudi arabia in conjunction with the uk Fucking put on a hell of a show last night and intercepted 99%. 99%. Can we get claps all around in the chat right now to this amazing coalition force? I want to see some fucking clap emojis for the amazing people who protected us here in Israel last night. I want to see some claps, guys. I'm dropping some claps. Clap it up, folks. Clap it up. Israel, UK, US, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia... Fucking clap it up for these guys. Protecting our asses and not letting us get hit by fucking shit. I was like, God damn, man. This is beautiful. The coolest part to me last night about all this, once the panic started wearing off, I was sitting on the balcony, standing on the balcony, and I was looking at the Israeli fighter jets, and you could see a one big green light. I was looking at the Israeli fighter jets doing all these fucking loops and spins, and I know that they're out there protecting me. Apparently, almost the entire fleet of the Israeli Air Force was in the air last night, stopping everything. And they've released footage of the amazing work that they did. And I can only imagine what Jordan was up against, what Saudi Arabia was up against. The fact that our neighbors, finally, it's, it literally gets me emotional. Our neighbors acted as neighbors. Yeah, we're at 380 people. Holy shit. I think we're getting a 400 live viewers tonight. The fact that our neighbors finally acted like neighbors last night. Jordan has never been a good ally of Israel, even though we've made peace. They've never been a good ally. 
Saudi Arabia has it started working towards it, but they've never been an ally. They've been an enemy. We're not even we don't even have peace relations yet. And the, the U.S. has been extremely, you know, they, they've been supportive, but like also extremely not supportive in a lot of ways. 392 viewers. Holy fuck. We're almost at 400 viewers. That's crazy. It's a lot of people. I've never had 400 viewers in a live stream. I've never had 300. Um, Alina said, so great to see you in great spirits and gorgeous. Thank you, Alina. I appreciate that a lot. I'm in good spirits. I'm tired, but being with you guys here is making me very happy. Um, uh, the fact that Jordan and Saudi Arabia came together with Israel last night, the UK and the US, to fight off this pathetic threat that is Iran, this embarrassing threat that is Iran, was something in the history books. I was sitting on the balcony looking at this fighter jet doing loops above my fucking head. And I was just, I was in awe of what I was looking at. I was like, this, I'm living through history right now. Whether this becomes uh, World War III or whether this becomes a regional war, whether this becomes written down as a, a memory of like the, you know, like a, a war that we'll always remember in Israel, this is history. I'm looking at potentially Jordanian airplanes a warplanes firing, flying over Israeli airspace, helping us shoot down. I, I, probably that's not what happened. Yeah, I'm assuming that most of the people that were here were, most of the fighter jets that were above us were Israeli. Um, I'm sure the Jordanian ones stayed there. But I was like, man, this is fucking history. This is amazing. This is so, so cool. Um, Tess Trueheart dropped me $2 in Super Chat. Humor is a blessing. Smile whenever you can. Agree. It's what kept me alive yesterday. Um, so I had some moments last night where I was like, when I realized that most of the threat was over around 4 a.m. on TV, they started projecting. I was like, all right, you guys can go to sleep. If there's anything more serious, um, as a quote, the sirens will go off. Um, and uh, and uh, somebody wrote me here an annoying comment. Daniel Levy wrote, not ICBMs, you dork. These were IRBMs, Intermediate Range Ballistic Middles. Sorry, asshole. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm a fucking YouTuber, not a fucking war expert. I'm sorry for not knowing the exact term of the missiles. Sorry, buddy. I'm joking. I don't know if you're an asshole, but your comment, because I can't tell you're into the way you're talking. I can't tell if you're being an asshole or not. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know the fucking term. My bad, dude. Sorry, I'm not an expert. I'm, I fucking make YouTube videos for a job. Not war-related stuff. I don't know about the differences between missiles. I didn't, I didn't fucking know what I was looking at yesterday on TV. People were telling me attack drones are coming. And I'm like, okay, I can kind of understand what that is from Call of Duty. And then people are like, okay, now low-cruising missiles are coming. I was like, I don't know what the fuck a low-cruising missile is. And then, then they're like, okay, inter-ballistic missiles are coming. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck does it mean? What's going to happen to me? What am I, what's happening? <laughs> I, who's going to do, who's going to, so I, what, am I, what am I supposed to do? Do I go to the bomb shelter? Do I go downstairs? Do I hide under the building? Where do I go? That's all I know. You know, I'm not a fucking expert with this stuff. 395 viewers. Are we going to surpass 399? Are we going to surpass 400 live viewers on stream today? Holy fuck, man. Iran must be... Uh, thank you, Iran! 409 viewers! I want to record this moment. We just broke a record. 409 live viewers on YouTube tonight, folks. That is so freaking cool. Hi, everyone. Thanks all for being here. We're talking about Iran and how terrifying last night was and also how hilarious it was. So come join the stream. Well, it's going to be too late by the time I post this, but I love you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Flunko said tall Jordanian pilots didn't enter Israeli territory. They did in their own area. That's what I assumed. I assumed that... Oh, there we go. Nice. Elal 787. I, I would pull the camera. I mean, you know what? It's not attached to anything. Can you see it, guys? I don't think you can see it anymore. Wait, is that it? Yeah, that's it. You see that flying through the buildings? That's an Elal Dreamliner 787. That's landing. That's the first one I've seen all day. I might have missed them earlier because I was out for a little bit, but that is the first 787 I've seen landing today, so that's cool. Good to know the airspace is officially operating properly again. Um, all I can say is that this experience has been insane. Like, I am happy I wasn't anywhere else. I don't know how I would have dealt with the situation if I was in Jerusalem, because people in Jerusalem and all around the country got way worse 
got a way worse hand dealt to them than what I did last night. I, I was pretty chill. Um, there wasn't anything crazy going on really last night for me. By the way, $36 in Super Chat. I don't know if I said hello, thank you to everyone. I did. But thank you guys so much. $36, that's great. Thank you all. 40 minutes on stream, we got 36 bucks. Um, by the way, guys, join our Discord if you would like to engage with us. We're going to take some calls later in the stream, and I would love to have some of you guys call. It's Israel. Are we at 442 viewers on stream? 500? What the fuck, Sticks? What the hell? Man, those of you guys who have been here from the beginning, you guys are probably in shock as I am. What the fuck? This is nuts. Um, okay, let's open, up the, let's open up the discussion now on what's happening next. Iran attacked Israel last night. Partly to save face. I'm going to stream real quick the video because I don't know if many of you guys... Many of you guys probably don't follow me on Instagram. So I'm going to stream to you the video that I uploaded on Instagram. And then we're going to take... I want you guys to... I want to hear your guys' thoughts Iran. on what I, I said, okay? The ethnic people, Iran's attack on Israel. Wait. Hear ethnic, I survived the ethnic people. The original, I survived Iran's attack on Israel. And here is what I learned. Last night, I spent my evening filming the Islamic regime's bizarre attack of drone, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles on innocent civilians in both Israel and the Palestinian territories. Most of us were fine, more shaken up from the hype, except for one person, a seven-year-old Bedouin Muslim girl. She is fighting for her life in the hospital as we speak right now. Eight of her family members, who are Muslim Arabs, remember that, were injured in last night's attack as well. These were the only victims of last night's assault of Israel by the Islamic regime. I also learned that the Islamic regime is made up of a bunch of cowards. Cowards that are willing to risk the lives of millions of Muslims to save face. I want you to remember this. Millions of Muslims. Millions of members of the Ummah. Their lives were put at risk last night as Iran fired their shittily crafted aerial weapons over Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon, Jordan, the Palestinian territories, and Israel. And this, as pro-Palestinian and pro-Iranian regime and anti-Israel sources rushed to celebrate the strange attack, as some success for the Muslim world. As rockets were flying over Al-Aqsa compound last night, where, where was the Al-Qassam brigades of Hamas? Where was Hezbollah? Where were the resistance fighters? And where is their condemnation of Iran today as they risked the destruction of the third holiest light in Islam? This attack was an embarrassment for the Muslim world. And those who celebrated are an embarrassment to the Ummah and an embarrassment to Islam. I learned that when push came to shove last night and under historical pretenses, both Saudi Arabia and Jordan stepped up to the plate to join Israel, the U.S., and the U.K. in warding off terrorism from the Houthis, Hezbollah, and proxies scattered around the Middle East. Jews around the world and the nation of Israel is grateful for that. Shukran. The world must stand against the terror of the Islamic regime of Iran. The world must stand against Hezbollah and must stand against Hamas. And may Israel be granted the schut to liberate the Palestinian people and the Iranian people from the clutch of radical Islam. Am Israel Chai. I survived. Iran's what do you guys think about my video? Let me, I, let me hear your thoughts. I'm curious. Do you think I'm? Do you think I'm just making pro propaganda, or do you think I'm? How do you say it like an Arab? Propaganda. You guys think I'm making propaganda, or do you think I'm? Uh, or you think I'm speaking the truth? I'm curious. And let's run a fucking poll. We're at a hundred four hundred and thirty viewers. I'm shocked that the fact that we have four hundred thirty nine viewers. This is fucking crazy. Um, please join our goddamn Discord group, folks. Because I would love to have you guys join in the call. And I would love to talk to you all. Let's run a fucking quick poll real quick here. Let's run a goddamn quick poll. Did Iran do a good thing by attacking Israel? There's a lot of anti-Semites in this chat right now. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I don't think we've ever had this many anti-Semites in here. And I don't think that most of the people here are supportive of Israel right now. I'm curious to hear. This is like pretty much like taking a... A random poll. Okay, st still people, okay, still people are saying. 53 votes. Iran did not do a good thing by attacking Israel yesterday. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, okay. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to see that at least, even though it seems like there's a lot of anti-Semites in here, a majority of the people who are in here are sane-minded people. That's good to know. What do you guys think is going to happen next? Because I have some thoughts. I'm curious to hear what you guys are going to say. I also would like in about 10 minutes to take some of your calls. So please join the Discord right now.
click on the link, join the Discord so we can take your calls and talk about what's going to happen next. But please comment to me right now in the stream. Just write me a short comment and we'll discuss what do you guys think Iran and Israel are going to do next? What do you think is the next move? I've got a bunch of theories in mind of what could happen. But I don't know for certain what's going to happen. And that's kind of the scariest part of this whole thing. I also want to say this because um, there's 400 people in here, which is crazy. I'm working with an amazing organization called the Hostage Forum right now to shed a light on a product that they're selling. It's pinned right now, but I'll also type it back in. Um, they are making a Passover Agadah. It's the story of Passover. If you guys don't know, the Jewish holiday of Passover, Pesach, we celebrate our freedom given to us by God from Egypt as we escaped captivity in Egypt. There are 130 plus hostages in Hamas's captivity in the Gaza Strip right now under insane, horrible, inhumane conditions. And they made a Passover Agadah in their honor that you could buy by donating to them. This is the last day to have it, um, to have it run. Oh my God, guys, Muhammad is here. And he's a member. Muhammad, can I call you? Muhammad, please, can I call you? I miss you, man. Guys, Muhammad, we got to bring him back on. We got, I'm sorry. 400 people. People are going to go crazy. Muhammad, I'm calling you on Instagram. Pick up. Pick up, bitch. Um, uh, so please, guys, check out the link that I just, I'm just i dropping right now in the chat. Donate to the hostage forum. Buy a Passover Haggadah in honor of the hostages. Um, it's an amazing cause. And these people are personally personally helping me um they're personally helping me and my channel continue to make amazing asbara content and pro-israel content content in spite of anti-semites like muhammad who's in this call right now who want to see israel fall and fail in spite of people like him who are <clears throat> crazy radical islamists let's see if i can give him a call i don't remember i never remember his stupid username on instagram there we go wait i found it where is it damn it i lost it Oh, here. Okay, let's call Muhammad real quick. Let's see if his bitch ass answers. Muhammad, answer the call, bitch. Muhammad, answer, dude. Don't be a little bitch. We got 400 people here. Speak the truth, man. Ah, man, Muhammad's... Muhammad's being a little... He's being a little bit. All right. Yeah, man, I want to make some money off of you, Muhammad. Come on. You're the only thing that makes these live streams profitable at this point. Come on, man. If you don't come in here, how are we going to raise money against anti-Semitism? You're the only one that, that can do it for us. Um, so, yes, wait. I'm curious to hear you guys' theories. Please, uh, please. I, I, I don't know if you guys wrote it already. Um, but please drop me some theories about what you guys think is going to happen. What do you think the Israeli response is going to be? Joe Biden has already ridden to... Uh, yeah, Muhammad is totally shitting his pants right now. He has no idea. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. I think he's here. He's here. Answer, buddy. Yeah, all right. All right, we'll give up on Muhammad for now until he's ready. Maybe he needs to be lubed up a bit. He's writing me some perverted, borderline homosexual stuff right now, which is, you know, no problem with homosexuality. I just didn't think he was going down that route. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say Joe Biden has already warned Israel. I know they had a conversation with Bibi Netanyahu yesterday to not escalate this further. I don't really know how you not escalate it further considering they launched like 300 aerial weapons towards Israel yesterday. It's kind of uh, it's kind of as escalated as it could possibly be. At this point, it's just going to be whether or not the U.S. will follow us into battle. It's clear, obviously, that Jordan and, and Saudi, is not gonna, they're not going to follow us into battle, but at least if we have their support, it would be interesting. Um, I am very much of the mindset that right now could be the time to actually make a strike on these on these Nazis, you know? It seems like this is the, um, if there was a time to attack these Nazi monkeys, this would be the time. Um, this would be the correct time to do it. Um, so let me read some of your comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys are saying. 
White King wrote, Jesus, your nose. What's, pro what's the problem with my nose? I feel like I, li I like my nose, man. Is there a problem? Is anybody, guys, is there a problem? Let's run a poll real quick. Let's run a poll real quick. Is there a problem with my nose? Bad nose or good nose? Is there a problem with my nose? Wait, this is very interesting. Wait, white king, you said I'm Jewish. So Muhammad in this chat, he actually says I'm not Jewish. So I'm, look at this, it's very curious. We have two anti-Semites in the chat right now. One says I'm Jewish, one says I'm not Jewish. This is a beautiful thing about anti-Semitism. They hate you, <laughs> and they hate you for different reasons, but they can come together on their shared hatred of Jewish people, but they're hating them for completely different reasons. Muhammad hates me because I'm not a Jew. I'm a fake Jew. And then White King hates me because I am a Jew. Um, I would like to invite White King to chat with me, if that's okay with you. Uh, White King, I would love to invite you to the Discord, and I would love to give you a call. I would love to speak to you. It would be an absolute honor and a pleasure of mine um, if we could get you on the chat and uh, speak to you about uh, being an anti-Semite. So if you're interested, please, 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 I'm going to pop the Discord link right here in the in the live chat right now. Join the Discord. Thank you, Avi. I appreciate you for li lifting up my nose. So there's apparently no problem with my nose. No problem with my nose. You're brown Jude. No, I feel like I don't have anything wrong with my nose. I'm, I'm happy with my nose. I'm happy with, I'm pretty much happy with this. I'm okay with how I look. I don't have a problem with it. It'd be nice to be called, not, not to be called Indian all the time, just because I'm not Indian, but I'm okay, I'm okay with it. I'm, I got no problem. Um, Josh Harris says they're trolling you and you're falling for it. <laughs> they're trolling me? <laughs> you're clearly new here, buddy. <laughs> Clearly, you're new here, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't troll me. I've been on YouTube for 10 years. You'll never be able to troll me. Even if you think you're trolling me, you're being trolled. you would never be able to troll me, buddy. I'm untrollable. Look at this. Muhammad and White King, two comments right next to each other. One says Indian boy, one says not white. <laughs> I fucking love this. There's two anti-Semites here who hate me, and they're both commenting next to each other at the same time. <laughs> Muhammad and White King, can we please invite you on to speak to us? I would like to hear from you. Uh, BT wrote, how is Safta? Safta's good. Uh, she had no idea what was going on last night. We didn't tell her. And luckily, there weren't any sirens in Hulon, even though they were getting close. And my mom said she could hear. My mom was with my grandma last night. In Hulon, she said that she could definitely hear the booms in the sky a lot closer because there were a lot of bombs going off in um, Ashkelon and in Ashdod. So it's relatively closer to Hulon than Tel Aviv. Well, I mean, Tel Aviv is closer to Hulon, but I'm saying Hulon is closer to those places than Tel Aviv is to them. Anyways, um, my mom said that they could hear the bombs, but luckily my grandma can barely hear at this point. Uh, 9 p.m., my grandma was in the bed, shut eye. My mom obviously didn't sleep the whole night and my grandma's caretaker didn't sleep all night. Which is hilarious. I've mentioned this again. Yeah, you, you guys are aware. My grandma's caretaker, Dod Uli, my uncle's caretaker, they're both Muslims from Uzbekistan, Muslim women. They just finished celebrating Ramadan and Iran fired rockets at them. Imagine how many Muslim workers there are in Israel who come from all different backgrounds, all Indian Muslims, Sri Lankan Muslims, Filipino Muslims who come here to work in Israel, Uzbeki Muslims. Imagine, and Iran fires rockets at them. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, it never ends. It never ends. Who would like to join our Discord call? I think it's time to take a few calls here, folks. What do you guys think? We're about an hour in with 356 people on stream today. Absolutely nailing it. Absolutely nailing it on stream today. Who's joining our Discord? Please join our Discord. 
Alice and M wrote me, loving your content to all. You're an excellent asset to Israel. Truth and facts right now. Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you, Alison. Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Santa wrote, your necklace is very strange. Does it signify anything? It stands out more than your nose. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, I've explained it in a stream before. I've been traveling the world for 10 years. So each one of these beads is from a different place where I had a significant moment or a significant uh, experience in a country around the world. Um, they're each uh, from different places around the world, and I hold them all very dearly. Um, join, join the Discord. All right, anybody, let me, I'm popping in the Discord right now. We'll see who wants to call. Anyone want to hop on the stream with ya boy? Let's see who's ready to call. Let's see who's ready to call. Let's see who's ready to call, folks. I would love to have you guys speak to me on stream right now with 361 people. We have 361 people on stream. I would love, would love, would be my pleasure, your boy Tal, to speak to you on stream, to have a conversation with you, to discuss, to argue, to, to love, to hate. Yeah, I've been talking to Saluki. We've been talking back and forth a little bit. He's, uh, I'm really, I, he looks like he's a lot better. You know, I'm really happy. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the new video he dropped today. It only had like 3,000 views, I think probably because... Uh, his channel hasn't been so active recently, but uh, man, Saluki's back, dude. He is back. He's looking healthy. He's looking good. Um, his, the, qual the quality of the content he uploaded yesterday was fucking fantastic. He even said, I saw in his comments, he was like, I'm not doing any more live streams anymore, which I think is a great idea for him. He's going to just focus on content. I'm really, really happy with, uh, I'm, I'm hoping, praying, and I, obviously I want to see him um, at some point. Just our schedules are both busy, but I'd love to link up with him at some point. Um... He looks better. He looks a lot better, and he looks like he's back on the right track. Um, so I'm really happy about that. The con If you guys haven't watched Saluki's new video, please, please, please go watch Saluki's new video because he did a very good job on it. Um, okay, I see somebody here with a Saudi Arabian flag with a name in Arabic. Zakino. Let's see. I'm going to give him a call. Let's see how we do this. We're going to get somebody in the call right now, folks. If you guys would like to call in, let me pop you the Discord link right now. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. And let's do a little call. Uh, there's somebody in here with an Arabic name. I, this could be a very interesting conversation. But he's not answering. Technical difficulties. I really need somebody who understands how to do live stream uh, stuff to help me with this aspect of running this show. I don't know how to do this. I need somebody who has experience with this on how we could run a show where we could do proper call-ins all the time because it's really difficult the way that I'm doing it right now. Just brace, brace for impact, folks. We got somebody with an Arabic name. I don't know what's going to happen right now. I'm curious. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Technical, technical difficulties. Hello. It we're having technical difficulties. Hello. Hopefully the difficulties will not be technical anymore. Hello, my friend. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Give me one second. I'm just going to turn down the volume on Discord because I keep getting the chat notifications sound. How do I deafen? Can you talk for a second? Yes. Keep going. Keep talking. Oh, no. Okay. I think I did something wrong. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to mute this. All right, buddy. How, what's what's your name? Hello. Where are you from? Yes. Uh, my name is Omar. Uh, oh. I'm from the Mamlaka Saudiya Al-Arabiya, which is the Saudi. 
Ah, um, you're from Saudi Arabia. Yes. Wow. Yes. Omar, very nice to meet you, man. Your country, uh, whether or not you agree with what your country did last night, I personally feel like I have to say thank you. I think it's amazing that Saudi Arabia stood up for Israel last night with that attack from Iran. And I'm really hoping and praying that our two countries come together soon. So tell us a little bit about how you feel, what you're thinking about this whole, uh, this whole situation in the Middle East. Well, it's, look, it's, uh, it's a very interesting uh, development. But, you know, I've, I've been talking with a group of people about this in my circle. And we discussed, you know, that Iran has been making threats the last two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, we said ourselves that they're not going to respond. And if, if they're going to respond, it's going to be a response that isn't really a response, if you know what I mean. Yep. And I think that's what we saw yesterday. I think they had to, they had to keep, had to make a statement because otherwise they'll seem weak. Um, so they had to respond. And the way they did this is by sending drones. Now the drones, they take hours before arriving. Yeah. So the threat was already well known before they even came into Israeli airspace. Right? Yeah. So, and Iran knew this. Iran does not want to escalate. They want to keep a straight face. They want to pretend to respond. And I actually tweeted yesterday. I mean, in reality, what it was, it was a firework show. It's almost like New Year. That's what it was. That's true. I, um, I, I, I watched a very good analysis by a YouTuber named Tom Nash, who talked about this exact thing on how uh, Iran doesn't really have an interest right now in fighting a war. It can't really fight a war. It doesn't really have the support of its people. It doesn't really have a, it doesn't have a strong anything. The economy is crippled. And um, for the most part, it doesn't seem like it's in its interest to fight a war with Israel where it's probably going to lose. I mean, it'll be a difficult war for everybody involved. Not going to be easy for anybody to win that fight, but also not a guaranteed win for Iran in any context whatsoever. And um, there's then there's the, the whole talk about the nuclear, uh, the nuclear option where they're, they've been trying to attain a nuclear weapon for years now and they're pretty much close. Everybody knows this. And it's been off the table. Everybody's been quiet about it for years. And all of a sudden now, if they get into some sort of escalation with Israel, that becomes an issue again. And they obviously don't want that. The question is that I have for you, what do you think happens next? Look, uh, ultimately, I don't think that uh, Israel will respond. I genuinely don't. Uh, and the reason is because it's going to go back and forth. I feel like if they attack, it's going to be a Hezbollah situation. Hezbollah, yeah. you remember when Hezbollah first attacked uh, Israel since 2026? Oh, sorry, 2006. So what happened was they responded. They have a response. And since then, it's been back and forth. No real, like it's scrimmages, or how you say it. Small battles here and yeah. there. But no real war. Skirmishes, I yeah. I think in worst case scenarios, what happens between Iran and Israel, is going to be back and forth attacking military uh, operational um, uh, places. But that's about it. It's not going to be a, a, a full-scale war. Do you, as a Saudi, do you personally have any sort of hopes and desires for what happens next in the region? Yes, look, I have my biases. Uh, and I say this and I'm pro-Palestine. Okay, that's and it. I've always been this. Totally fair. That's, that's always been my my stance. Mm -hmm. So from a from an interest perspective, you no, know, I will always be in the side of the Palestinians. And I say this, and there's no there's no shame in my uh, from my position to say this. However, as much as I might ha have my hate towards Israel, I have as much hate towards Iran, right? And if you even ask Muslims, majority majority of them hate Iran more than Israel. Because, and I, and I always discuss this with my friends, right? Iran is probably the bigger enemy for the Muslims at the moment in Israel. So, they always say, look, let Iran and Israel fight it out. You know, we just take, uh, you know, reality. It will be an ideal situation. You don't like Israel. You don't like Iran. And we would like them to fight. So, from a spectator perspective, this is almost the dream situation for us. Well, weak in Israel. Because look, Iran is not a weak opposition. Mm. Neither is Israel. So if they fight each other out, eventually that some of them will weaken. Be both of them. So we see that as almost like a winning formula. 
Do you mind, uh, Omar, if I dig into with you a little bit more about your hatred for Israel? Is it okay if we talk yeah. about it? Absolutely. So what, what is your, can I know a little bit about you? Like, how old are you? What, like, uh, did you grow up your whole life in Saudi? Yes. So I grew up my whole life in, in Saudi. I'm 23, 23. And I'm a medical student. Medical so I, student. Right now I'm studying abroad. I'm not in Saudi right now. Okay. I'm studying abroad. I'm a medical student. So. Are you, are you studying in another Arab country or somewhere else? No, I'm in Europe. You're in Europe? Oh, okay. In Europe. So in like a pretty like yes. open, diverse society, like you're, you're encountering a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds around the world, yeah? Yes, yes. I mean, the university campus itself, there's every nationality. Okay. Have you had much interaction face-to-face -face with Israelis in your life? No, I wouldn't say. Look, no? I have been on, on channels before, on service channels, where I have discussed with Israelis. Mm -hmm. But not really like in one-to-one -one in real life. Is this your first time? Is this your first time discussing with an Israeli, like having a conversation like no, this? No, it's not. Okay. But if you if you mean like I've actually sat down with somebody of an Israeli nationality, no, I haven't. But okay. in terms of a server, Discord, etc., then I have before. Yes. Okay. So we're. I'm. I'm curious about because you seem like a very rational, nice. You're. You're so far from all the people that we've discussed. Who we've only had a few people uh, who are like anti-Israel. You're the only person. You're like. You're the conversation I've been waiting for. Because rarely do we get a chance to speak to somebody who hates you. Like you openly say that you hate Israel, but you 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 are giving it to me in a way where I can actually have a discussion with you. You're able to rationalize your points. So I'm curious, like where where does your hatred of Israel stem from? Is it purely with an Islamic bias, like because you know there's there is sort of a bias in Islam against Israel and Jews in general, or or is it does it come from what's happening with the Palestinians? I'm curious about it. Yeah. Look, ultimately, I'll always say there's always some religious biasness. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Muslim world has a special connection with Palestine is because we identify with, with a common religion. So the commonality between us, you know, other than being Arabs, of course, is that we all share the same religion, the same principles. Right? So obviously, we're always going to be closer to them. And so we, we personally, we feel the pains of the Palestinians. Because we feel like it's happening to us. So we share that commonality between us, us and them. And so that's one of the things I would say. What, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, and it's not to, dis not to take away from your experience, but in what, in what way do you feel like a Saudi person can relate to a Palestinian? Well, we have the religion. So Islam is what unites us, really. But you, but but I, I have to fire and again you, you I'm in a respectful way. Yes, you are not united, and Saudi has been anything but helpful to Palestine throughout its entire history. So what I'm curious about, and I and I don't, it's not to be a, it's not in a gotcha moment, but like there is no unity between Palestinians and Saudis. For the most part, I know a lot of Palestinians. I've grown up on them. They pretty much hate Saudi Arabia. Because they see them as completely abandoning them. So I'm curious, and it's not just in a government perspective. If there was, there, there's enough Saudi businessmen around the world. There's enough Saudi money that, that's not involved strictly in the Saudi government. Where And there is, and I know this because I've met some Saudi people abroad. I know some people from Saudi. Uh, there's enough of this anti-Israel sentiment within Saudi Arabian society that the lack of support that's been given to Palestine, it seems to me like this is just like, um, uh, in English, I'm trying to figure out the term. It's like something to just fall back on and saying that we recognize the pain you're going through, but we're not actually willing to do anything to help you. Like we're okay with watching you suffer eternally without actually putting our money where our mouth is. I'm curious your take on that. Yeah, no, look, ultimately, we can only do so much as the population, as the, as the people of, of Saudi. There's only so much we can do as a people. Why? Then it's up to the government. Right? What we can do is, as, as Muslims, as Saudis, is that we can help Palestine financially. And that is something we've never, uh, never been short of. Financial support has always been there. Right? Now, it's the political part that gets more complicated. Right? So when we say, okay, what, what can, technically speaking, as a Saudi government, if we're not entering a war, a direct confrontation with Israel, 
what is there technically that we can do? We can help them financially, aids, money-wise. We can stand with them in international courts. We can condemn certain acts by Israel. But unless we're fully committed to enter a war with Israel, which in this current time I don't think is possible, or have been possible in the, in the past, there are reasons for this as well, which I can delve into. I don't see us doing much other than that. Oh, look, if you ask a random, a random Saudi, would you be willing to fight? He will tell you, yes, I would want to fight. I think that would be the sentiment in majority of the Muslim countries. And we as a people, we are very strongly believe in the rights of the Palestinians. So we as Saudi, we have not abandoned Palestine, which maybe some Palestinians might say, or might, might assume. I mean, I, I would say it. I would say it openly, and the, I want to fire back on that because you said you financially have supported Palestine, like the Saudi people have financially supported Palestine. Yes. Do you not think if the Saudi people have actually financially supported Palestine in any sort of seemingly way? I mean, you and I can both agree when we look at both the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, anywhere where Palestinians live. And then I'm talking to you across the Middle East, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, anywhere where Palestinians are, and I know about Saudis and I know about Palestinians in Saudi Arabia. They are not particularly treated as the cream of the crop in Saudi Arabia and in the UAE. Uh, don't you think if you guys were if if the Saudi Arabian people were actually helping Palestinians financially, it would be in a seemingly different situation? In what way? I mean, look say? look at Palestinian society everywhere, not just in Israel and the West Bank. I mean, can we both agree on this? Pal the only place in the world where Palestinians live a good quality of life as a, as a group right now, anywhere is it within Israeli society, within the borders of Israel. Can we agree on that? You, you mean economically, financially? Economically, uh, financially, religiously... Uh, from the elements of freedom, the only place right now, anywhere in the world. I, okay, let's not do anywhere in the world, let's do in the Middle East, because in Canada, US, yeah, they live freely. But anywhere in the Middle East, the only place where they're living openly, without any barriers, without refugee status, without any sort of barriers, so they say the only place they're living a fruitful, happy, decent life is within the borders of Israel. We can agree on that, right? Yes, I mean, we, I can. I, I mean, and I know Saudis. I've been on a date with a girl from Saudi. I've had intense conversations about this. I know about how Palestinians are treated in Saudi Arabia. They are not seen as equals in Saudi Arabia in any way, shape, or form. Is that correct, or am I wrong about that? No, I mean, I, I would disagree. Like, equals in what sense? Oh, yes, there, there are some... In human, in human decency. In, in human decency. I've heard about how, how Palestinians are treated in Saudi Arabia. And they are not seen in a good light. They're seen as extremists a lot of times. I mean, this is the case in the UAE. It's definitely the case in Bahrain. And in, in Jordan, Egypt, and Lebanon, they are literally treated as third-class citizens. In Syria, for the most part, they're rounded up in, in concentration camps and bombed. I mean, they've been bombed since the... Like, what my, what my quarrel is with you, and I say this in the most respectful way, you have such a hatred indoctrinated in you to Israel, and I don't necessarily understand where it's coming from, because I feel like you're intelligent enough to break out of that. But you're unable to look at the fact that the only place in the Middle East that's offering Palestinians a decent life, completely free, with dignity, where they can make their own decisions, not as a second class, in their own land, is Israel. But you look at the rest of the countries in the Middle East, the Ummah, the Muslim Ummah, and the Arab people, everybody who has that title, whether it's Iraq, Syria, Jordan, which is mostly Palestinian, they have treated Palestinian people for all of time like shit, absolutely horribly. I've grown up with Palestinian people here in Israel, whether they're Druze, Bedouins, whether they're Muslim or Christian. I've had them coming through my house my entire life. I've gone to their house. I know what it's like to see a Palestinian living in dignity and freedom in their own land. And the only place where that's happening is in the borders and the confines of Israel. So my, 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 my curiosity with your hatred for Israel is like, are, do, you just choose, do you just choose to deny that? Or is it more of like you are unwilling to accept the fact that Israel can exist in the first place because it's Jews? Which is also fair. That's no. fine. Yeah, look, no, look, you raise, you, you raise some valid points. 
And it's hard to, some of them I, I cannot really say anything against. Like you mentioned, for example, just briefly, you mentioned the economic uh, prosperity. And I, I would say this. Israel is one, one of the countries in the Middle East which has economic prosperity. That is why you see even uh, people from Gaza for this, this war. They worked in Israel. They had an income from Israel, within Israeli borders. But there's no denying that economically speaking, it's better. Definitely. I've seen people in Ramallah say the same thing. And I've seen people in the West Bank say the same thing. Right? They earn more money in Israel than they do in Palestine. And you can also you can always put this down to uh, the economy as a whole. Right? But yes, they earn more money. And that is that is that is a, a good thing. But I would say my hate is not only because look, I mentioned before religiously, but we feel sympathy with the Palestinians. But it's also what we see outwards. So the media, what they show us, or what we read, what we see, like recently, for example, and this is this is one of the reasons why it's hard not to hate Israel. I see people, settlers, and you can admit this as well because Israel itself, not long ago, admitted the same thing. Settlers attack Palestinians. And this is also happening right now. Killing Palestinians with the protection of the IDF. You see people dying in Gaza. And any person, any human person that has, that has a heart, it's hard for him not to hate this. Not to hate the acts that you see. Yeah, but do you, you understand that you understand that settlers or Palestinians kill settlers as well? Yes, yes, of course. Of course. Like it's a it's a but, cycle it's a cycle of violence. Like this week, if you only watch Al Jazeera, you'll get the impression that settlers are going on a rampage burning Palestinian villages nonstop. I was in the West Bank this whole week, I was following the news very closely. There were villages around Taibe, which is one of the Christian uh, populaces of the West Bank. They kidnapped a 14-year-old goat herder, a sheep herder, and they mutilated his body, killed him, and threw him out in the street until the idea found him. The settlers responded. That, yes. The settlers responded by burning down villages. A horrible cycle of violence. But but you know, if you only watch Al Jazeera, you only watch pro-Palestine news sources, you'll only see. Now maybe I'll, if I jump to a conclusion with you, your claim would be like the settlers shouldn't be there in the first place. Right, you probably don't agree with Jewish people living in the West Bank, correct? Partly, yes, partly. Yeah, why? Why do you think? I, that, I feel like. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, no. I feel like there has been an expansion, right? There has, there has been. been an ex expansion expansion of, of settlements in the West Bank. You don't. Many of them are illegal. You don't think that we should that Jewish people should be able to live in the West Bank? That's not necessarily my point. My point is that. There are laws and there are parameters of where they can live. Now, when you have, look, and I'm going to always, and I'm going to put this back to the government. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, as much as I hate the government, the George of Israelis hate them too. It's a far-right government. And they, you have your fair share of problem with them as well. It's not true, by the way. Not a majority of Israelis hate the government. There's, there's a lot of people who hate the government, but a majority of the people actually do support the government right now. Yes. But there, there's still a, a growing... Uh, this taste, this taste. There is, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would say also. I look at the government, for example, and they have the same rhetoric. Now, one of one of the one of the most famous government people figures in the government is Ben Gvir, and Ben Gvir is known. He's very known among the Palestinians. He pushes this uh, this uh, idea of expansion, of pushing Palestinians out, and he's within the government. So it's hard to see how the government itself is not the, the ones pushing this narrative that we're going to expel the Palestinians from certain places in, in Gaza and build settlements. Again, so, I think I think the important thing, though, to make the distinction with, and I, I'm not a supporter of Ben Gvir in any way because I, I genuinely don't know much about his politics. I've never been interested. But the thing is that the one distinction I have to say to correct Ben Gvir, people like Ben Gvir and people with on the right side, the right coalition of Bibi's current government, they they don't really ever openly say they want to they want to kick out Palestinians. What they do say is that they want to kick out the extremists or the jihadists, which on Palestinian or pro-Palestinian news they invert and they manipulate that to make it seem like it's all Palestinians. But again, it does. The thing is, it doesn't even as a claim, it doesn't make sense. As an actual claim that you're making, that Jews want to like ethnically cleanse or kick Palestinians out of the West Bank, it doesn't make sense. Like it's not actually something sensible because throughout history, their numbers have only increased both in the West Bank 
in Gaza and in Israel. They're not losing more land, they're gaining more land per year. Every single, I was just around the West Bank this week, there are so many villages in the West Bank that are completely empty of people. They're literally just vacation house villages for Palestinians with American citizenship. They build the houses and they leave and that's in every right for them to be able to do that. Because there's never been a peace plan, ever, that's been, that's been properly negotiated, both on the part of Israeli, but mostly on the part of Palestinian society, who refuse the idea of a Jewish state. You need, you need to understand that like there is a heavy nuance here and it's, the case is definitely not Israel kicking or ethnically cleansing Palestinians from the West Bank. Like 100% I'm telling you factually, Habibi, that's not the case. It's just not what's been happening here on this land. Because the thing, obviously in 1948, what Palestinians perceive as the Nakba, you know, there were certain villages that were ethnically cleansed. Some of them were st strategically were kicked out for the military but that's because we were in a state of war. There was an actual war going on declared by the Arabs, not the Jews. The Arabs declared that war on Israel. They lost, unwilling to make any sort of uh, reparations, unwilling to make any sort of, claim of, of negotiations. They continue to fight war after war after war for 30 years. Or at a certain point, what you're seeing now, people are always like, you shouldn't look back in history. What you're seeing now is the, re it's the result of the unwillingness, mostly on the part of Arabs as a whole with this idea of pan-Arabism, to settle with the idea that Jews will have their own state in this land. You're seeing the results on a day-to-day. -day. And when I'm there, I've been through the West Bank extensively. I'm a Jew who has traveled to Nablus. I've traveled to Ramallah. I know the places. I've been to Hamas refugee camps in the West Bank. I've seen Hamas members with my own eyes. I've sat with them in the West Bank. I'm not saying I'm an expert on every little thing that's going, but what, what you're seeing there is not the result of some sort of ethnic cleansing or apartheid by Jews amongst Palestinians or towards Arabs, because just the, the, the math isn't there. You couldn't, if you, if you right now, Omar, are to try to prove to me that Israelis are taking over the land and that Palestinians are losing land, you won't be able to prove it. Yes, look, I, I, I get it 100%. I get it. You know, but even then we look at, uh, so we look at the maps, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the maps. And you see, now you said that, yes, the Palestinian land is actually grown. How come we see uh, maps of Palestinian, actually, Palestine actually shrinking, becoming smaller? The West Bank becoming more occupied by settlers. You know, we always see, we always see Jews making Aliyah. Yeah. I think it's, a, you call it Aliyah? Yeah. Aliyah. Where they come to Israel. Aliyah. So how 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 is how is Israel gonna accommodate all these people? So they build settlements. And the settlements will be in lands, most likely, where Palestinians already live, either in the land or neighboring those lands. And that was also you look at it. Okay, well it's kind of a threat because every time they're coming closer and closer. And we see this, and we see, personally I believe that the the I hold the position that the land is actually you know getting smaller where the Palestinians are living. And that's in the West Bank specifically. I mean, Gaza has been the same for a while now. So let's imagine, let's imagine on the border of Yemen and Saudi, right? Yemen and Saudi share a border, correct? On the south. Yes. Let's imagine that right on the border of Yemen and Saudi, a group of Yemenis broke into a village on the south of Saudi Arabia and took, o they, they just killed a bunch of people. Okay, they just killed a bunch of people on the southern border of, uh, of Saudi Arabia and Yemen. As a Saudi person, how would you respond to something like that? Well, of course, look, I always say that there must be a, a level of account accountability. Correct. Justice must be served. So justice must be served, of course. So when you, when you try to make the claim, and I'm not saying that you are making that claim, but the maps that you're seeing as if Israel is taking over land from Palestinians... The only cases to my knowledge that I know of that Israel has ever taken over land of a Palestinian in the modern day right now is when they're or, or destroyed a house or cleared the land of a Palestinian is strictly when there's the pay for slave program by the Palestinian Authority, which most Palestinians reject. And if you don't know what that is, it is when Mahmoud Abbas has a pay for slave program, any Shahid of Islam or Palestinian Shahid that kills a Jew or injures a Jew or tries to do some sort of terrorist activity um, towards a Jew is paid. 
to live in this house to, you know, and that's the families that they go after. Those are the houses that they go after to destroy or to take over. But for the most part, if you're going to try to make a claim that Jews are taking over Palestinian houses, it's just not happening, my friend. Jews and Palestinians live completely, completely segregated in the West Bank, completely. And from the perspective of land, there is, it's a small country, but there is ample, more than enough land to accommodate all of us. Even if we were to bring in all the Palestinians from abroad, which I, you maybe you don't know this about me, I believe in the right of return for Palestinians. It's got to be under the right context, but I believe in the right of return for the Palestinians. And the way that I would rationalize it to you, what kind of right do you have? And I don't say this to belittle you, but as a Saudi, as an outsider from this region, to tell me that I don't have a right to live in Ramallah, where is my ancestral people's homeland, and, and a Palestinian has the right to live in Haifa. Why should we both not be able to live in both pieces of land? The problem is the Palestinian perspective, and this is a known hardline Palestinian perspective. In the Gaza side, it's the whole thing from the river to the sea. And the West Bank, for the most part, it's also from the river to the sea. But those that are willing to lit pasher in Hebrew, that are willing to um, sort of be okay with the Palestinian state just existing in the West Bank, they don't believe in any Jews being able to live in the West Bank. A complete apartheid state, ethnically cleansing any Jew that's ever lived there. So that's my problem. Why does a Palestinian have more of a right to live there than I have to live there? And they can live anywhere in Haifa because there's Palestinians living in Haifa or in Yaffa. They can live anywhere, but I'm not allowed to live in their perceived lands. Look, I, I, I would say that it's maybe a feeling of an existential threat to the Palestinian people. I, I genuinely believe that's, that's part of it. Look, I don't, I don't think necessarily that they say that Jewish people cannot live in the, in the land of Palestine. Because we say, we always say that Jewish people have always been here. And no, no Muslim will ever, de ever deny this. Even mm -hmm. Palestinian people, they won't say there has never been Jews here. I saw one of your videos, right? And you were in, I think, I think it's Ramallah. Ramallah. And there is a, a Samaritan people. I think it's Ramallah. I'm not oh, sure. no, that's Nablus. That's outside of Nablus. Nablus, yes. I mean, you clearly see, I, I saw another video, not from you as well, but another video. Palestinians and Samaritans they are casually hanging out in shops you know being friends being nice people living along each other yes they're a bit, bit far away from an Abbas the main city but they're living in somewhat peace and they've always lived there the Samaritans have always been in this in the sport mm, I have to correct you on your history real quick just and it's a history lesson purely the Samaritans and the Palestinians have not always lived in peace because before the Palestinian people were a people before there was an ideology of Palestinian people, Samaritans numbered one million in the city of Shechem before it was called Nablus. Nablus is the colonizer's name from Roman. It was called Neopolis. It's a Roman name for it. Same as Palestine. That's a Roman name, not an Arabic name. Anyways, Nablus becomes the name uh, when the Arabs conquer that land under the three Arab caliphates that existed in that land, they colonized the Samaritan community. The Samaritans live in peace with the Palestinians out of force and out of necessity, not because they're happy-go-lucky. There's a group of Samaritans that also live within Israeli territory in a city called Cholon, where most of my family is from. The, the Samaritan numbers on Al-Ghizim, their ancestral homeland, has been decimated by Islam. Decimated. There used to be one million Samaritans, most of the population of Nablus. Because of conversion? Or because of conversion. conversion, some of it was by conquest. I mean, there's, there's well-written history by the Samaritan community of the conquest of them by Arabs and by Muslims, both merchants and, uh, and missionaries. I mean, there's, there's tons of history about it. That not only that, there's proof about the whole concept of Knafe. If you look up into the, uh, the biblical history of Knafe, it was originally technically a Samaritan thing, and you can see the history of it being passed on, now becoming a Palestinian thing. And um, same thing. I just have to fire back on. So Samaritans, by the way, they live in peace now out of necessity, but that's because their numbers are in the 800s. They used to be 1 million. They used to be the entire population of Shechem, of Nablus. And all of them are pretty much Muslim now. But if you look, most of the people who are from uh, Nablus are originally Samaritan, and they know that, that history is passed around there. And as for you were saying that Arabs know that Jews used to live in this land, um, and they acknowledge the fact that Jews always lived here, I just have to fire back and I, I want to let you respond because I'm talking more than you. But why 
do no Jews live in any Arab city in the West Bank? Why do Arabs live in some Jewish cities in the West Bank? If you believe that the Jews have a right to exist, why is it impossible for Arabs, for Muslims, to tolerate the existence of Jews in their cities? You go to Ramallah, you go to Shechem, you go to Nablus, you go to Hebron, you go anywhere where there is a large population of Muslims. There are zero Jews. Zero Jews. I'm not going to say that every community of Jewish people in the, um, in the West Bank has Arabs in it, but some do. Cities like Ariel, they have Arab residents who live there. Why is it that everywhere you go in the Arab world now, for the most part, Jews have been ethnically cleansed from the Arab world? There's no Jews really living in Saudi, at least not the ancestral ones, or in Yemen. Iran is dwindling. Iraq, they're gone. Oman, they don't exist. It's not a Jewish issue. That's an Arab problem. That is an Arab problem. It's inherent within Arab community. It's an issue within the Arab community. Damn, someone's spamming me. Sorry. So whoever's messaging me, please stop. <laughs> I want to give you a moment to respond about that. Yes. Now, look, from my, pers from my opinion, I think it can depend on two reasons. I would say the first reason is how the Palestinians themselves, what their views on the, how they perceive the Jewish people. Number one. The second one I can say, the Jews themselves do not want to live there. Okay? Oh, one of the things I said, okay, so the Jews, I don't think the Jews would want to live in Palestine. Because let's look at it realistically. The area is controlled by the Palestinian Authority. It's drenched in poverty. It's, it's very poor. Economic, like we said before, economically speaking, would make no sense for a Jew with an Israeli citizenship to live or work within Palestinian Authority controlled areas in the West Bank. I'd say that's number one. I think they would themselves prefer living, maybe because they themselves might might have fear. Right? That's number one, that they might have fear. But I think it will be more reasonable for them, personally, work in an area where they're safer, around Jewish people, where the economy is more prosperous and better. I think that's one thing I would say. The second one, you might say, okay, well, Palestinians don't want them. Let's, let's perhaps assume that, yes, the Jews would want to live there. I would say that the Palestinians themselves would reject this notion. They wouldn't want them there. And the reason why I could think of this is because of the way that they perceive the Jewish people. So you have to, look, you have to understand. Ever since the, kid, the Palestinians have been small, growing up in Palestine, they've always had, and everyone, I think majority of them, had some resentment towards the Israelis, towards the Jewish because they see in some way, some way, shape, or form what is happening to other Palestinians. Now, whether you want to say it's justified, it's, it's a time of war, they see their people being killed, their people having their houses torn down, whether with context or without context. I can also argue from that perspective that they have fears. They have a fe fears that these Israelis or these Jews are coming to my town, slowly but surely settling, then they're going to increase, more are going to come, it's going to become a safe haven. And now I don't have a home. So I would say it's these two things. And this is what I can personally muster up and say, I think these are the reasons. Don't you think it's a really fucked up thing to say, though? Because Arab and Muslim and Palestinian population numbers have been increasingly increasing way faster as a whole globally. In the last 75 years, then Jews have even gotten close to. They've even gotten close to. And by the way, Jewish people cannot live legally in any Palestinian Authority land. Legally. It, some of them, somebody wrote in the chat here, what, there's uh, some journalist that one of our viewers, Raj, wrote. There's a journalist, that one Jewish journalist that apparently lives in Ramallah. But legally, you're not allowed to interact with Palestinians. So Palestinians are definitely not going to tolerate, let's say, a Jew from America or a Jew from anywhere in the world moving into their territory. They'd be like, of course not. You can't be a Jew and immigrate to Palestine. So, okay, then the closest other Jew that can move is an Israeli Jew. But Israeli Jews, are it's illegal for them to actually interact with Palestinians. There's a law, I forgot the exact term of what it is, and I learned about it when I was in Ramallah, where Palestinians are legally not allowed to communicate with Israelis on fear that they would be collaborators. Yeah, I mean... There's, there's, Omar, I tell you one thing, it's really important. 
There's only one apartheid actually happening in this land. Only one. And it is 100%. 100% Arabs on Jews. 100%. There's only one apartheid. Find me one Jewish leader in the Arab world right now. One. One Jewish mayor. Find me a Jewish uh, uh, a council person, a congressman, a parliament, president. F find me a Jewish speaker. Find me one. There's not one. The Palestinian cause exists partly because of the pan-Arab dream of no Jews in power, of ethnically cleansing Jews from the Middle East, of having one ummah, one nation for the Arab people. This is a product of mistakes that Arab people made 100 years ago. But it's continuing on to this day. And unfortunately, people like you, who see, you really seem like a sweetheart, man. And I hope that we can keep talking. I, I like discussing with you. I like, the way you. I like the way that you listen. I like the way that you engage with me. It's, having, it's fun talking to you. But I think you are part of the problem is that you continue this hatred for Israel when you literally, I'm sorry, man, you're completely uneducated on the topic. And I don't say it in a way to be dis, like, uh, disingenuous to you or to come down on you. But like, you really don't know what you're talking about at all everything that you've said right now has been just it, it's been clear that like all the information you have on this is just only from pro-palestinian sources or al jazeera like some sort of propaganda that you've seen it's not actually from any on the ground factual source yeah no i mean yes i i, I agree from my part i will always admit that i'm not the most read up about this in the world Yes, we always, of course, uh, I mentioned before that there's always going to be a level of, of biases. Like, uh, personally, I don't take my news sources from Israel. I will, I will most in most cases, take my sources from people I think I trust or I trust. Mm -hmm. right? And it will most often be from Palestinians. Now, me, I say that as an Arab, oh, this might be messed up. But it might be it might be true, but I might take the side more of an Arab. I might believe him more because we share that commonality. And whether that's messed up or not, it's true. So I would I would often take my sources from Arabs or Muslims, right? I would look what they're doing. Now I'm not the most educated. Like I'm I'm very I have a very I have a deficiency in terms of knowledge concerning the topic of Palestine and Israel. One hundred percent. Now I'm talking simply from what I what I think I know, what I see. Right? Now you might say, okay, well you're 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 misinformed. I might say you might be right, absolutely. But obviously, we, most people they're not gonna sit down and research most of the histories and laws and what's going on. They're gonna look. What am I seeing? I'm gonna make a judgment. That's usually how it goes. I see this. This is bad. I make my I make my decision. That's and it's yes, totally more, that's more. totally fair. That's that's totally fair. It's a hundred percent fair. I agree, and I think that like people like me, I'm a Jew. I usually will take my news first from a Jewish source, and especially this isn't your conflict. This isn't your war. It's just something that takes up a part of your brain. But I hope that you understand, like from my perspective, and I really don't come. I I really don't mean to come off as aggressive or anything. When I get an opportunity to speak to somebody like you, who's willing to engage, I find it to be my duty to make amicable, amicable conversation with somebody like you and to give you azbara, we call it azbara, which is kind of what I do as a job now, which is explaining to the people the non-truth about Israel. There has been so much propaganda and lies spread about my country and about my people. And that's part of the reason why my parents or my grandparents were ethnically cleansed from Iraq. Because Muslims one day woke up and said, these guys are not part of our nation anymore. But... I want to I wanna end off, I just want to show you something. Have you ever seen a Palestinian meal? Do you know what that is? A what again? A Palestinian meal. No, I'm not sure. What is, what is that? I'm not even sure. Can you, can you see the stream right now? Do you have it pulled up? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. I'm going to pull it up on camera. I'm going to show you something real quick. Maybe you've seen... It might seen... be slightly behind, like 10 Okay, it might be a little delayed. I'm putting it on yes. camera. If you see, there's two coins I have here. Have you ever seen this before? I still haven't seen them. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> There's a little bit of a delay. Yeah. Okay, now let's see. These are it's like a, a coin with a hole yeah. in the middle. So these two coins, I carry these around me. With I've been carrying these around with me as I've been traveling the world. 
for 10 years and they, they tell the story of my people in the easiest way possible. They do all of the explanation about Israel for me in one go. Like I don't need to do anything. These coins tell the entire story. They do the whole conversation that we just had in one second. A lot of people like to say that Jews ethnically cleanse Palestinians from this land. Israel is not even a real name for a country. It always has been Palestine. This was the, um, the British, the, after the Ottoman Empire, this was the British currency during the, um, the British mandate for Palestine. When Palestine was being divided into a country, there was a grace period where the British colonized the land. And this was the currency. It was called the Mil, M-I-L. And if you can see on the coin, one of these is from 1927, the bigger one. This one's from 1946, before Israel declared independence. This one's from 1940 or 1927, about 20 plus years before uh, or 20-ish years before independence. If you can see on the coin, it says, you see the word Palestine, right? Written there in English. I don't know. I see, I see in Arabic. I think I see in Arabic. Right. So in, in, in English, it says Palestine. In Arabic, it says Palestine. And then in Hebrew. Yes. In Hebrew, it's the really interesting one because it does the whole thing for me. It says, uh, it says the word Palestina in Hebrew, the way that we would spell it and pronounce it. And then in parentheses right here at the very end, there's a parentheses that says Aleph, the letter Aleph, and the letter Yud, which stands for yeah, yeah. Eretz Israel, literally the land of Israel. There has never, ever in history been a point in time where people have not regarded Palestine as either Judea or Eretz Israel, the endemic homeland of the Jewish people. There's also never been a point in history ever where Jewish people haven't been on that land, ever. Sometimes they've been a minority, but there's never not been a time where they've been on that land. Even back then in 1927, before the establishment of the state of Israel, before all the Jews were moving, before they were being ethnically cleansed from the Middle East, people recognized around the world, the Ottomans did as well. You can find this in all the tabos, every single tabo that the Ottoman, these were land document papers um, that the Ottoman Empire had over the hold of the land of Palestine. They always recognized that this was Israel, always, 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 always. It's just something to keep in mind when you when you think about the nuances of this conflict and uh and 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 sometimes from the perspective of the arab world where a lot of times they like to deny our right to exist in this land you have to remember that we are not endemic to europe there's a reason why the holocaust happened it's because europeans recognized us to not be european and same thing for the farhud that happened in iraq or any of the ethnic cleansings that happened in the middle east to jews it's because they recognized that we were not arabs they recognized that we were not one of them. They're still recognizing that today in Ethiopia and Iran as Jews are being persecuted around the world by Muslims. Something to keep in mind, men. There's a reason why we have a connection and a stronghold on this land and it's because we're from here. Just something to keep in mind. Of course, not, look, I, I understand that, of course. And you know, we as Muslims, we're not, we're not unfamiliar with the story of the Jewish people. But uh, we say, uh, Bani Israel, uh, the children of Israel, the uh, Prophet uh, Jacob. So we, we are very well acquainted with these people, with these figures, with the history of the land. You know, we know that God, uh, God said, live in this land. Right? We know this is not unfamiliar to us at all, like history-wise. It. So we are, we are, uh, you know, very well uh, read up on this, because Muslims we know this very well since since uh, children we know this, right? But I think it's more it's more politically charged now, and everything. Look, ultimately, I don't. There's no problem for me. Even Islamically speaking, my prophet lived with Jewish people. But now there was hostilities eventually, and, and some people were expelled. The Jews were expelled, but that's a longer story, right? So we don't have a problem with living with, alongside Jews because our prophet did it. But what really made the, made it you know problematic back then, one thousand six four hundred years ago, was the hostilities. And it's the same thing we see today, hostilities. And look, ultimately, we want we want to live in peace. Everyone wants to live in peace. No, I'm I, I'm living here. I'm in peace. I wake up every day. I got my food on the table, food <laughs> on my back, everything. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, so you know, I wish this for everyone, and I wish that there is peace in the Middle East, specifically the Levant, which for many years have been the most affected region in the, in, in the whole of, of the Middle East. So look, we, we always say, I wish for peace. 
And I, I, I see you as a person also. And I also watch the Saluki. I don't feel like you have any biases or hate necessarily towards uh, Palestinians as a people. None. I watch your videos. I'm yeah. a subscriber too, you know. And I see there's some there's some openness. There's some, uh, you know, uh, we can deal with this. Like if people like you were in Israel, we can definitely live in peace. Right? Not, not everyone's going to be on the same page as us, of course. It's understandable. But definitely, I like, I like your approach. And I hope, I say, inshallah, there is peace. Right? Inshallah. Between the Palestinians, between the Jewish people. Hundred percent, man. Muslims. Yes. I'm and with... obviously, so we we have to build those bridges, and we have to ensure every, also that everyone's right is met. That not one is treated unjustly, because the other one gets, let's say, all the glory. It has to be justice. It has to be fair. Um, yes, but I, I do hope that there's a solution, and that Palestinians can live in peace. Jews can live in peace, no problem. I, I believe there is a solution. I, I also think that part of it is tackling it. And I think a lot of Israelis don't think about this. Is Part of the bigger issue is tackling the, the hatred that exists for Jewish people in the Arab world. And I, and I think that this it starts with conversations like what we're having right now. And showing people that Arabs and Jews can have conversations like this. And I have to be honest with you, your people, Saudis, and then people from the Gulf states have been the ones to step up to the plate. And I don't know what's different about you guys and your culture because I don't know enough about, to be honest with you, about the nuances between the Gulf states to the Levant Arabism. But the Arabs of the Levant have really, in the last couple of years, in my opinion, stepped, or not the Levant, of the Gulf, have stepped up to the plate, whether or not you like or you hate or whatever you feel about Israelis or Jews, but just have stepped up to the plate to say, Khalas, we want peace. We want to get to a point of peace. And to me... I, I have immense amount of respect for your people from that aspect, um, from that whole region. And I think that conversations like this, they show people that you and I, you come into this conversation saying that you hate Israel. I hope that that's not maybe, I, I hope it's not the truth. Um, and I hope that it's a discussion that we can keep having in the future. Like I would very much, if I came to Saudi Arabia, I would love to visit you, hang out in person. I don't know if you'd feel the same way but I would love to meet you face to face and I'd love to have a conversation face to face. But I think that that's important. I think that's really, really important because it's not just a Palestinian issue. It's a Middle East issue. It's an Arab issue. We need to take care of the core of the issue, which is Arabs need to know about us Jewish people, but not from the Quran, not from the book, not from history. They need to know who we are today. You don't know who we are today because we're not in your place anymore. We're all gone, we're all here. We don't exist in your lands anymore. And that's the problem is that we, we can't live in your lands anymore. We were ethnically cleansed or it's very dangerous for us to live there. That's part of the issue. And I think that that's really, really important. Omar, I'm going to let you go, man. It was a fucking pleasure speaking to you, bro. I appreciate you coming Thank you, on. Thanks, man. Hopefully we can speak again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Absolutely. Thanks, being, thanks being on, man. See you. What a, what a fucking gentleman, huh? That was a lovely conversation. I saw a lot of super chats coming in. We're at seventy six dollars. I'm sorry, I went that I went on for so long with that. But uh, okay, people, there was a lot of hate and a lot of stuff. People were saying good stuff about him, bad stuff about him. Omar is the type of person that we need in this world. You guys don't understand whether he's informed or misinformed, or his opinions are bad or opinions are good. We need more people like Omar, who I can sit with him and have a conversation for like thirty minutes. And discuss this stuff within nuance and be able to listen to each other back and forth. There was a conversation, a back and forth. I will be, I will say, my Israeli mentality was firing at him a little bit more, but he was just actually saying things that were misinformed, so I had to correct. Maybe that wasn't the most amicable or nice of me to do, but that's a fucking good guy. Claps in the fucking chat for Omar, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad, if you're in here, learn a fucking lesson. That's how you behave, man. That's how you get people to talk. That's how you get people to have a conversation. Claps in the fucking chat for Omar. What a G. What a G. Hopefully one day we can get Omar to say that he doesn't hate Israel anymore. <laughs> fucking inshallah, baby. That's the goal. I hope he's listening to that in post and like, oh, fuck. <laughs> this Jew's trying to get me. Okay, wait. I want to respond to some of these super chats because we're at $76 in super chats. And you guys are amazing. HD dropped us $10. Iran doesn't do anything directly. Worried for the Hashemite kingdom. Or do you mean, HD, that you, you are worried for, for the Hashemite kingdom or Iran is worried for the Hashemite kingdom? Because I think Iran wants to take down Jordan from everything that I know. 
LE dropped us $19.99. God bless you, LE. Thank you. This is on behalf of the spammers, bots, and anti-Semites. I got to be honest, though. We were, hold we're holding 330 people during this last hour or something, which is unbelievable. Um, Eyal Tzrilin was saying, Achi ekar toda la zbara, sita tzava imken efo. Eyal was asking, or he's saying, thank you for the zbara, and if I've done army service. Eyal lo siti tzava, I haven't done army service. Um, so I can't tell you where I did because I didn't do any army service. This is my closest thing that I could do to army service, is my azbara. How can, HD dropped us another $5. How about an Emirati approach where people can live, work anywhere, but you have citizenship in only one state? First, you need educational reform. I think, I truly believe HD that the Emirati approach may potentially be the solution to Israel-Palestine conflict. It may be the solution. I think it needs nuance. It needs, a, it needs a finagling a little bit. We need to figure out the exact way to do it. But the Emirati approach may be the solution to this conflict. It may just be it. Um, Crazy Spiders 17 dropped a six shekel. Oh, I fuck, sorry. So he was asking what I should do about the, if I should ask him about the peace process with Israel. I'm sorry, we were having such an engaged conversation and the super chats fly. And the thing is, there's not enough super chats coming in where I should only put the super chat thing on. So I had the regular chat on and then it just flew and I couldn't find it. I was in the middle of the conversation. Hopefully Omar, I don't know if Omar is in the chat. Um, maybe next time I'll keep that question for Omar. And just make sure you tune in and we'll ask Omar what he thinks about the peace process. Um, I'm willing to take another call if you guys are interested. Just because there's so many people. But I'm going to take a moment real quick just to thank um, people who are promoting and helping our channel. I want you guys to know about this product that's launching right now. It's called the Hostage Haggadah. I just dropped a link for you guys. Uh, Nimble.il. Please click that link if you guys can. Join, join the, uh, or, or donate to the cause. The, if you guys don't know, Pesach or Passover, it's a holiday that's coming up. Jewish holiday that celebrates our, ex, our, our freedom from Egypt, from slavery in Egypt. It's a, it's a holiday we celebrate every single year. Um, and the Hostage Forum, which is an amazing, um, amazing organization that works here in Israel, who is taking care of and supporting the families of the hostages that are in Gaza, came up with a product called the Hostage Haggadah, which tells the story of Passover, that everybody sits down at the table and reads their seder, um, but it tells the story of Passover via, the, the, uh, via honoring the hostages. Um, so please, please, please click that link, and uh, I would love for you guys to buy or donate for this Hostage Haggadah. Tonight's the last night, last couple hours where they're running the campaign for this, so it would be great if you guys were able to um, donate or buy, uh, buy that. Um, please check it out. And the people who are running the hostage forum, the people behind this, have been immensely supportive of my YouTube channel, immensely helpful. So I would really appreciate it. I'm going to drop the link one more time here. Um, guys, I'll take maybe two more calls. How about we do two more calls? Um, it seems like, yeah, man, uh, Omar was a fucking G, dude. Omar was a G. Omar is a G. Defo having him back. Let's call Israel Tavor. Where's my phone? Let's give Israel Tavor a call because he really wants to get on. Anybody else who wants to join the Discord, um, I would love for you guys to join the Discord. And we could uh, we could bring you on for a short call before I get off tonight because we're already at like two hours. But, you know, we're at $76. Maybe we could round it up to $100 in Super Chats. Who knows? Oh, Muhammad was texting me like crazy. He said, let me speak with this dirty Saudi. Tell him I said he's a dirty bastard. And Allah has a place in hell for dirty sellouts like the dirty bastard Arab. Let me speak with his dirty sellout. Omar is a dirty sellout Saudi who hates Shia Muslims more than disgusting Zionists committing genocide in the Holy Land of Palestine. Let me speak with him and shame him in two words. Jews was a part of the Iraqi council, you stupid Indian bastard. <laughs> oh my God. Muhammad, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> he just rage quit. Let's, Israel Tavor, one second. Just see if we, I'm just going to run a, a quick prank call on Muhammad. I don't know if he's watching. Uh, You're a bitch. That's it. I was just to, pitch him, just to piss him off. We called him, just said you're a bitch, and we hang up. <laughs> uh, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> we got his ass. <laughs> I can be petty. I can be petty, folks. I can definitely do it. I can 100% be petty, especially to anti-Semites like him. 
Uh, okay, let's call Israel Tavor. Let's call Israel Tavor. Let's get him online. Hello. Bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour. How are you? How are you? When are we going to meet up, my friend? When are we ever going to meet? Whenever you want. I'm not far away from you, I guess. You're running into other Barak in supermarkets, saying hello, buying yeah. food on Friday. I'm jealous. I know, and we called you and you were waking up. <laughs> I was very sick that day, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, first thing I wanted to say, Omar is amazing. Claps. Claps in the chat for Omar again, folks. Let's get one more claps in the, in the chat for Omar. Claps in the chat. Yeah. He does not bring as much money as Muhammad, but it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. It can't always be about the money with us Jews, you know? It can't just only be about money. Sometimes it's got to be about good conversation. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're looking for solutions to this conflict, and Omar is the kind of guy that can bring a solution to, to that mess. It's somebody you so, can work uh, with. That's, like, that's yeah. what I like about him. Is like I feel like I have. he gives me a sense of hope. He might hate me right now. He might not want. He and might not support me. He's not hating you. I don't think. He, he didn't ha have hate in his in his voice. True. It was like uh, uh, he wanted to learn and to uh, express something, and he was very honest about what he did not know. Yeah. And that was uh, so refreshing, and he was willing to to listen, and we were ready also to listen to his perspective his side and that was uh, very uh, very interesting there's a few things because i was listening to your uh, uh, chat with uh, with him i don't know if he's listening to us but uh, i hope so just one thing for the settlements in the west bank it represents three percent of the west bank this figure does not come from me it comes from shalom Arshav, which is a very um, pro-peace movement in Israel, uh, it's uh, peace now, uh, known worldwide, and uh, so those 3% are mostly located around the border, except for Ariel and, uh, and the Kiat Arba, but mostly they're in near the 1949 uh, uh, line, so this is to have this number, it's only 3%. Um, for Ben Gvi and Smotrich, which are the far right of Israel, at the last elections, both together were only 10% of the votes in Israel. So um, uh, this is the, another number that we need to keep in mind. And uh, the reason why the map of Palestine seems to shrink is because those maps are made up to look that way. Yeah. We could say that Israel extended, extended into the Sinai, and then we uh, gave it back. So we could say Israel shrank also in some kind of way. So um, uh, it's more complicated, of course, than it sounds. And um, and yes, also I wanted to correct you on one thing, uh, Tal, if you sure. don't mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's in Morocco, there's a guy called uh, Andre Azoulay, and he's the counselor of the king. So he has a very high position. In Tunisia, the Minister of Tourism was uh, René Traversi, he was also Jewish. And there's in the um, uh, Iranian parliament, there's a uh, place that is kept for the Jewish community in Iran at the condition that they hate Israel. And this is something I saw, the, um, uh, our dear friend Muhammad said that Zionists are not Jews. I say Zionism is Judaism in action. Yes. And this is. This is the way uh, the the way it is. It's really uh, about the, that. <laughs> then to come back to what we got last night, the I got first uh, Hakan Das ice cream. If you want to know <laughs> the, the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you enjoyed that fucking ice cream, you little you fucking Jew. <laughs> I, was, I was eating ice cream and listening to the fighter jets of Tel Aviv. Uh, <laughs> It was pretty cool. That was a, quite, a, quite an experience. Yeah, then I watched uh, Pornhub and that was fine. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Said like a typical Israeli. By the way, somebody wrote Terra12. She donated thirteen ninety nine Canadian. Said, what are your thoughts on people visiting Israel at this time? Uh, I don't, I'm openly not recommending visiting Israel right now. There's people who disagree with me on that. I just say because it's a very... Uh, 
you know, uncalled for situation, unless you're Israeli or Jewish, I really wouldn't recommend visiting right now. And if you've never been here before, I really wouldn't recommend coming right now because it's just, you never know what's going to happen. It just doesn't seem like the right time for tourism. And I wanted to just say, I want to discuss something with you that I thought about Israel. Um, like when you were talking about how he's very rational, and he is, the only thing is that I was like during the conversation with him. And I, again, I don't say this in a sense to make fun of him, to say anything badly about him. But to me, the Gulf states obsession of like hatred with Israel and support supporting Palestinians, it's very similar to me to the hatred and obsession of Palestinians that sort of like the left LGBTQ yeah. for Palestine have, where it's like you care about it. But like if you were face to face with Palestinians, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Like I actually like Palestinians. I have fun with Palestinians. Like I have Palestinian friends, but most of the like the gay people for Palestine, they wouldn't actually be able to have a friend who's Palestinian because Palestinians overwhelmingly are homophobic. That's a known thing. And same thing for like same thing for like Saudis or Gulf state people who are overwhelmingly support Palestinians. Most Gulf state people don't have Palestinian friends. And it's not because Gulf state people are bad people, but that's because Palestinians and Gulf state people are like two different realms of existence. And from, yeah. from, from the perspective of Gulf states people, they do kind of look down on Palestinians, both economically and culture wise, behavior wise. So I kind of see it as like one and the same. It's kind of a disingenuous love and appreciation of Palestinians, but it, it, it's to a limit. Like you wouldn't actually do it if you cared about them. No, yeah, I agree with you. Also, concerning Arab Israelis, I was speaking with one of my friend Bahim, and um, we, with a friend, we asked him, "Would you like, right now, like Tel Aviv and everything, to be Palestine?" And he said, "Absolutely not." And he took out his his uh, Zeut, his ID, Israeli card. He says, "I'm Israeli," and he told us. 70 to 80 percent of Arab Israelis think like me. I said, can we make a little movie of you, a little certain uh, uh, of you uh, saying that? He said, no, because it could be dangerous for me uh, because the repercussion from more extremist um, Arab Israelis or Palestinians. And this is a reality around the uh, social pressure uh, for Arabs. There's a huge uh, peer pressure around them. They cannot talk freely. I was looking at Cory Gilchester's video and sometimes he has to hide people's faces out of this issue. And um, and yes, and there's a big difference between Arab Israelis and Palestinians from the West Bank and uh, Gaza. There's uh, this difference because Arab Israelis know how it is to live in Israel and to live freely and get bitwach uh, leumi and uh, social uh, uh, security and things like this. So. There's also that uh, the the fact that inside Israel, Arabs, uh, as you said, and you were totally right, they economically they thrive, and uh, yes, it's, uh, it's it's better for them uh, to to be in Israel according to themselves, not from me. And concerning also what happened last night, to come back to this uh, topic, uh, should Israel react? I would say, like the majority of Israelis, yes not out of eight, not out of revenge. It's because if we do not react, it will send a very bad signal to the rest of the Middle East that you can attack Israel and they will not respond. And this is unfortunately something we cannot allow. And uh, the reacting is almost like a way to make a statement and saying, uh, we cannot let this happen again. And so people could say yes, but maybe uh, uh, Iran reacted also from what happened in Damascus with the consulate of Iran. Yes, but the, the people inside the consulate were the ones that were managing the Hezbollah attacks on northern Israel. And as you said, we have uh, tons of uh, people that are uh, uh, like our refugees from northern Israel, plus from uh, Otef Aza. Beautifully said, as always, my friend. You are well-spoken, handsome, thank you. vegan, oh, thank atheist, you. not vegan, atheist. Yeah, atheist as always. Does that mean I hate uh, our uh, uh, way of thinking? Quite the opposite. I think uh, atheism is the, uh, the uh, final uh, step of Judaism. 
Oh, I hear I hear the drones, by the way, again. I was hearing them oh, last night. Now? Yep. Okay. There's drones in Tel Aviv anything. again. Um, yeah, well, next, next time I'm going to come on your uh, live chat next to you and speak with people to <laughs> smoking a cigar. We could do it, actually. We, we definitely organize. Well, I, we need to meet in person first. I've been so busy. We really need to. And you, I know you like you were actually following up a lot in the beginning, and then I just like I'm so shit at responding that I think you just kind of gave up. But we need to. We do need to. No, I, I don't want to harass you. That's why. You're not harassing I me. Like I love little, talking to I, you, I man. I feel like a little bitch <laughs> uh, hanging on your testicles. <laughs> on my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my brother. Actually, toda as always. Kif leberitcha. We'll talk again soon. All right. Toda. See you after. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Israel Tavor, friend of the show, man. I fucking love that guy. We need to make some merch with Israel Tavor's name on it. I'm Team Israel Tavor. Suck my Tavor. I'm Tavori. Shimi Tavori. Um, St. Mark, I'm trying to call you. Go into our DMs. I'm messaging you and just hit the call button. <laughs> Go into the call. St. Mark, I'm trying to call you. Hannibal saying, I got to do a podcast. Would you guys watch it if I made a podcast? What if we turn this live stream thing into a podcast? Would you watch this if it was a podcast? I just, I sometimes think it's maybe worth it to just do this as a podcast. Because like, look, the on the ground, well, I'm curious. Tomorrow I'm dropping the um, Red Heifer video. We'll see how you guys react to it. It's very different than everything I've done so far. Higher production quality. I invested a lot more time in the editing. Um, but the thing is, no, I don't have a problem with having 100 viewers. It's great. It's just financially, the, pro the, the live streams are the only thing that make me money through the super chats. Like, I don't make any money off the YouTube videos anymore at all. At all at all. So, like, I don't know if it's worth it. Also, we got a super chat from Alex. $19.99. Free Jews from anti-Semites and free spammers from their own illiteracy. Amen, Alex. And thank you so much for the $19.99 super chat. St. Mark, I heard you pop in. St. Mark? Hello? Let's try to call that boy again. Thank you, Alex, for the super chat. I appreciate you a lot. I'm trying to explain to St. Mark how to do this. And it's not really working. Okay, he wants me to. He wants me to call on uh, Instagram. Let me try on Instagram. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties as always. St. Mark, check your IG DMs. I, I messaged you on IG. I want to get this guy in the stream because we've talked to him so much. On uh, We've spoken to him so many times on here. And through the chat, he's been a pretty big supporter recently. But he's not answering the St. Mark, dude. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I, I want to get him on because we've already worked hard for it. Uh, did I say, by the way, thank you for $106 on stream today? $106. Oh, wait, I didn't even check the poll. Let's see. Would you guys watch this if this was a podcast? Yes. 96 votes. I, I tell you what, it would make my life a lot easier to be a podcaster rather than a YouTuber at this point with this channel. I, you guys know I have six other YouTube channels. It's just the, uh, like, financially, it doesn't make sense to stay here in Israel. I'm not making nearly enough money to, that it is to survive on, on YouTube. And I think if I like lived in Thailand, for example, and just did this as a podcast or a live stream show, and every once in a while I could fly into Israel and do some on the ground content for you guys, I just think, um, I think it's impossible for me to stay here. Wait, White King wants to call in? Mark, check your Instagram DMs. Look, look at your messages on Instagram. I'm messaging you on Instagram. Wait, does the white guy, the white racist guy uh, want to... 
White King, he's not getting paid enough. White King, I'm down for you to call in. I would love to speak to you. Can we call you? White King, can we call you in? I already work for the Mossad. Okay. White, neither White King or... Is Muhammad the only guy who wants to call in right now? Should we do a quick call with Muhammad? Let's do a quick call with Muhammad. The White King is not, not a man enough to call. What's up, buddy? Uh, yes, yes, yes. You gonna run away again? No, no, I was just fucking with you earlier. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm, I'm all right. Good, good, good. Nice. This is the nicest interaction you and I have had so far. That's nice. Yeah, Okay, you're done with the shouting. All right, we're turning a new leaf. Is Muhammad having I'm, a new? I'm happy for you. You made a nice new friend with, uh, with the dirty Saudi. The dirty Saudi, Muhammad. Do you think that you may be a slightly racist? No, no, no. I don't speak about the race of Saudi. I speak about the uh, the, the political st uh, stature of Saudi people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate as well what you said. You called them out on this bullshit. This this sitting on the fence. Uh, I mean. This Saudi gentleman has really made me appreciate you, actually, because as much as your extreme beliefs on one side are very pro-Israel, very pro, like, do what we have to do to eradicate Hamas, whether it's kids, whether it's people dying, it doesn't matter, they started this, da 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 It's expected. You're Jew, you live in Israel. So... I think it's more disturbing to hear a Muslim say <laughs> we support Palestine and we financially back Palestine and they intercepted half of Iran's um, missiles to, uh, as, a, as a form of support for Palestine. So it's really hypocritical. It's disgusting, honestly. And I just well, sure. Muhammad, though, but like you, ha you understand that most of the rockets that Iran fired landed on Palestinian areas, right? This is this. Where is the proof for this one? There's maps. There's map. There's clear maps. There's a girl in the hospital, a Palestinian girl in the hospital today because of Iran, and eight of her family members were injured. Okay, like, look, actually, look, Saudi Arabia technically did more good for Palestinians yesterday than they ever did. No, 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 no. Listen, I think when these attacks happen, there's many. Let's be honest, and you need to concede to this. The Iron Dome showed insecurities yesterday. It showed insecurities. There was uh, bombs that landed in Israeli occupied land, in Israeli land. Okay, so this is the first thing we need to just accept. Okay, Israel needs to now worry that they're not untouchable. America is already hesitating to cause something with Iran because they they can't do it. They've got their balls deep in Ukraine. Are you They've serious? There was a ninety nine percent success rate. With what? With stopping the with stopping everything that they were throwing at us. You still had hits, correct? You still had hits. Therefore, you're not in the on country. on Palestinian land, like on on Arab Palestinian areas. It, it wasn't just in Palestinian areas. They hit the military base. In the, from my knowledge, there was a hit on a small building on a military base in the south, but that was it. It was, was the, well, of course, it of was that, and then. Side. And, it was, and then it was just mostly Palestinian civilian areas. Like I've been, I'm going tomorrow or on Tuesday, I'm going down to that area to speak to the Arabs who got Look, affected I'm by sure, this. Yeah, please do, please do. I'll watch that video. But, but, course, but, but, but like, like, you understand that they fucking, they nearly killed a 10 year old or seven year old Arab girl, a Muslim girl. It's, it's, look, any children dying is sad, but why do you care about this one girl when you've killed over 50 cuz she's a part of my nation bro she's my she's my country i know i know that city i know that city those arabs the arabs that live in that city are wonderful people they've been they've been amazing to me we we have a good relationship they serve they serve in the army the bedouins who live in that city they're like they're great people you know like they they support israel can i counter that Sure. That's understood because you you have a you have a personal relationship with these people because, yeah. like you said, they're where you're from. They support your cause and all of this. As soon as you're able to actually remove yourself of your own desires, of your own perceptions of success, and put yourself in the kid in Gaza who's dying, he also believes he's just as right as you do, right? 
so the, the women, the children. So this sympathy for one, for one child just because he's on your side and lack of sympathy to the other child because he's on the other side, is, don't you think it's concerning that there's been tens of thousands of kids died, but because politically their fathers or maybe uncles or maybe this have a hate for Israel and a, and a hate against the occupation of Israel, that you remove sympathy for these children? Don't you think that's, that's wrong? I don't, I don't that's think it's wrong so. because I know that you, for example, didn't call out or had any sympathy for the dead kids on October seventh? Like we all, no we all, we all, huh? There was no. There, if you're talking about, the, come on, bro, the, all this beheaded stuff. There was no proof, and it. Proof I didn't say beheaded. I just, I just said dead children, and you said there's there, no dead there children. Was lots of teens. There was lots of teens and stuff, and anyone, anyone who died as an innocent soul, I have. Genuinely, genuinely hurts in, my, hurts in my heart because the Quran tells us he who kills an innocent soul is like he killed all of humanity. But then, but Hamas members came in yelling Allah Akbar and murdered babies. They came and they, they said they done this in retaliation of the occupation for seven While years. saying Allah Akbar. It, it got, so that, that doesn't matter. You know, this is a Western fixated. We say Allah Akbar. I'm not Western. I'm fucking Israeli, buddy. I'm not Western. Right, but, We've been dealing. Right, so we've been dealing with this for seventy-five years of people killing us while yelling Allah Akbar. I mean, it's like it's like a Christian saying God is great. Uh, Allah Akbar isn't some. The Christians God don't yell God is great as they murder you. Christians created the whole KKK in the name of Christ and in Yeah, but how many Jews are dying via the KKK nowadays? How many people yeah, are dying so via the KKK you, but, nowadays? Right nowadays. How many people are dying nowadays because of radical Islam? A lot. Not, not as many as, not as, actually terrorism has been accumulatively more of white Western people, especially in the past 10 years. All terrorist attacks, whether it be in London, whether it be uh, in France, whether it be elsewhere, whether it be America for the school shootings and all of this stuff, this agenda of terrorism really came with 9-11 after the reaction of... But there is an issue, there's an issue with radical Islam, especially in this region. I mean, it's, and it doesn't, it doesn't even affect other minorities more, it affects Muslims more. How many Muslims were killed? How many Muslims were killed in Syria and Lebanon? How many Muslims yeah, were yeah. killed in Egypt? How many Muslims were killed in Jordan and Iraq? Radical, radical, radical Islam is definitely is definitely here. We can see that with ISIS. We can see that with the Taliban. But you are literally you are a part of that. That that is not at all because if if we was a part of that, why isn't ISIS coming and helping Palestine fight against Israel? They do. There was. They literally. They literally were. First of all. Israel has battled ISIS on multiple fronts, both in Kham in in Gaza and in the West Bank. They're rife throughout Sinai, and there were there were Hamas members who were, who ran around with ISIS flags. And they're disgusting. Any one of them that did is disgusting. And I'll say that to you now. I'll say that to you forever because I come from an area in Lebanon. I come from an area in Lebanon where they go to the border of Syria and have to fight. I have cousins and family members who have died to wars against ISIS, to wars against extremism. So. I, I'm not here to, to compare or to try and associate anyone. But associate. you support Hezbollah, man. It's one and the same. It's the same shit. It's, how is it when ISIS have wars with Hezbollah when we fight this extremism against ISIS? How, so how can we be the equivalent if we are we are in battle? Because with Hezbollah Muslims? still Hezbollah still yeah. oppresses Muslim people. So does Hamas. Who and where? Who and where? In Lebanon. Who and where in Lebanon. Where they're dragging they're dragging, they're dragging your country into a fucking war. Um, is America dragging themselves into a war? No. Hezbo Nobody attacked Hezbollah. Nobody attacked Lebanon no, in this no, no, war. No, no, no. They immediately I'm started firing in, in preconceived support of, of Hamas. Right. And no one which is being America. funded by who? By Iran. Who does what? Oppresses its by own Iran. people. It, right. That's, that's a whole different conversation. Let's go it's not. No, no. It's not a different conversation. It, this is okay. this is my problem with your kind of yes, person. Look, there's, you there's you you want to erase you want to erase what's going on for the benefit of your conversation. This is radical Islamic terrorism from its source, from the source, which is Iran, and it's spreading it throughout. Let's talk about the galaxy leadership that's sitting that is sitting hostage by the Houthis in Yemen, a crew of Filipinos who have nothing to do. Nothing to do with this conflict, who are still held hostage right now by the Houthis in Yemen. And the Arab world or the Muslim Islamic extremist world is celebrating that some sort of, some sort of achievement. Okay, look. I'll get to that. Thank you, by the way, Barack, for the super chats. 50 shekels, another 50 shekels. Muhammad, you are you're literally a moneymaker. We're at 127. Liv dropped us 27 SEK. Miri okay. dropped us five dollars. Great service you're providing. Thank you. Thank you guys all for the super chats. 
can I say something, my friend? Go, Muhammad, go. And please, just try to be open to this one point. And I'm trying to be open to you, and I'm trying to, okay. to, to, to listen more and talk more. Okay. You, you used an example that Hezbollah and Lebanon, they got involved in this war straight away on their border with Israel, with, with Israel and started fighting as soon as the, the, the Gaza thing happened. Correct. And you said, it's, no one attacked Lebanon, what's it got to do with them, what's it this? The USA and the UK and Germany and Argentina, all these countries, no one attacked them, but they have been showing unprecedented like support for Israel that is proud, out on every summit, proudly saying we are supporting Israel against this. No one attacked them. So the same way they've been defending you, why do you have a problem when, the, when Lebanon defends Palestine? I don't have a problem, but when you get your ass kicked, just like take it, but you know? We, we, <laughs> we're yet to see whose ass got kicked. As, as in 2006, we saw whose ass got kicked. I don't know. I mean, I, Lebanon doesn't seem in good shape. I got to be honest with you. Lebanon has... You've tried it when we was in worse shape. And the Israeli tanks... I was but but, but the thing is, you're not in good shape. Neither is that's Iran. Not, this is neither is Palestinian that's, that's society. Very that's very true. That's very true. The, so, the, that, the, but that's... The, Muhammad, the, Muhammad, listen. The Quran and Islam are not everything in life. I understand that they're, 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 they're important. They are very important. They take priority in Muslims' yeah. life. But you have that's to realize, as a society, as a, as a, as a society, there's a certain level, there's a certain level where you have to, you have to get over the humps that are inhibiting you. And right now, the yeah. radicalization of your religion in the society of Arabs is what's causing your downfall. Oppression is called radicalization. From ISIS being oppressed in Pakistan and created by the West, from the Taliban being oppressed by the invasion you blame of you blame the West and Jews and Israel for all of your problems without ever no, taking responsibility I, I for the core so. issue. I, I, People I in your so. society are extremely unhappy. People yes. in your society are oppressed. You have yes, to understand well. that. You have I, to understand I, I, that. I, I, Bro, I'm the first one to understand that I'm a Shia Muslim. If I go to Saudi and I say this, I'll be skinned and killed, right? So I understand there is oppression with us and Islam isn't... Muslims are not perfect. Muslims are people, they're human, they are not perfect. They are radicalist Muslims, they are shit Muslims, they are hypocritical Muslims. No one's trying to say we're, we are God sent. That's a, that's a Jewish phrase, okay? We, we believe in, in Islam, so there's good Muslims, there's Muslims. But the moment you have a Saudi coming onto your show, uh, who's meant to be from the, the city of Islam, from the city of Islam, where our prophet was there, where our prophet spoke about about defending the Islamic State, about defending Al-Aqsa, about all of these things. For them to sit while they intercept any, uh, any missiles that are going to harm Israel, when they open their airspace for Israeli air, uh, uh, jets and stuff to, to roam over Saudi and send missiles from there. When they open summit discussions and they bring in Saudis and Jews and Zionists and they speak to them, all, all fine. This is, and, and he sits here with chest. Omar had the, had the nerve and the balls to sit here. And I appreciate his conversation. I appreciate that he listened and this and that. So even though if I disagree with him, I can learn certain things from him. So don't take it as I'm some jahil. We say jahil, some crazy just... That, no, I can learn from I mean, you, look, to be fair, you're showing a different face this time, and I don't necessarily yes. trust you, but, like, you, you have been extremely racist and homophobic and also, like, personally been, because, been very racist I, to me during I this conversation. Speaking, today, today, I didn't want to speak with emotions. Today, I wanted to remove emotions aside and actually try and get... To, I saw you your reaction to Amr's conversation. I saw, actually, no, the first judgment I made of this character being able to have a conversation was true but the way i approached it took that away and, and it, it brought out a petty side of you where you just wanted to label me anti-semitic and all these things well i still believe I mean, that you're anti-semitic because i know i know your beliefs i know the things that you were saying maybe down the line maybe down the line uh, you, you, it will be proven otherwise that because omar told you he hates israel and he's not anti-semitic okay i told you the same thing i hate israel uh I don't, and it made me anti-Semitic. Yeah, but you also <laughs> called me Indian and not a real Jew. But, but what's that? What's that? <laughs> which is not what Omar did. <laughs> Omar said he has a hate for Israel, which is rife in Saudi society. Uh, Saudi Arabia doesn't really... Uh, uh, be, me, say, me, me saying you're not Semitic isn't anti-Semitic, by the way. I, I am Semitic. From where? My family's from Babylon. Oh, you're going back 4,000 years. 5, I'm not. 5, My grandparents came from Iraq. Okay, so the Iraqi Arabs are Semitic as well. The, the Iraqi Jews were Semitic. They spoke. Oh, they the, spoke Hebrew. The so, so, yeah, they so spoke a different come, language. Where did they come from before they went to Iraq? Israel. But Israel wasn't Israel at that time. What was it? Palestine. 
So you just showed the coin. It was Palestine, and then you said in April it was also Palestine, but it said. Lamb. Come on, man! <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. You're disingenuous. You and I both know there's never been a Palestinian country ever. It's not. It's not. But my, my main concern wasn't about. No, don't run away from it, Muhammad. Yes. You can't say something like that and run away from it. You and I, I you, you and I both know that Palestine never existed. Palestine never existed. It's it never existed when, as a place. It never existed. Prophet, when Prophet Yaqub went to went to the Kanak people, he literally told the children of Israel, "This is not our land. The farmers that have been here was here before us, and they'll be here after us." What was the land Prophet called? Jacob said this. But it was Canaan. Canaan. And then the land was changed to Palestine. Okay, buddy. <laughs> All right, Muhammad. We'll, I'm gonna go now. We'll we'll call you back again. This was a nice conversation. Last thing, last thing, last thing. Sure, go. One last thing. Let's let Muhammad end. And I hope you're listening. Yeah. And Muhammad, I hope you're listening still. When we speak to Israelis, when we speak to Jews, we have the duty to take their take their opinion because they have emotions behind it, because they have a, a, a bias towards religion, the same way he said he does. But what's a shame? What's a real shame? Is the bias that the Jews and the Israelis have towards their religion? is so much stronger than the bias that this Ahmad Clyde claimed to have. To sit and say that you hate Israel just as much as you hate Iran and Islamic State, and this hate is because of secularism, because Iran is a Shia secular state and uh, and Saudi is a Sunni, uh, Sunni state. So when, when, it, when it comes to Muslims coming and voicing their opinions as, as Ahmad did about hating Iran and about hating Israel just as much and about how they, they, they support Palestine, they are the furthest thing from support, but they are in hand as bad as Israel. I'll tell you this, the Arab state is a disgusting shambles right now. Israel is not the biggest enemy of Palestine. Saudi is, and Ordon is, and Egypt are. These are the biggest enemies of Palestine. Wow. Some big claims. These are the biggest enemies. So who would you say are the best enemy, though, the best friends of Palestine right now? The best, fr the best friends have been uh, friendship is a hard word in the Arab state. One thing the Jews have been blessed with by God is community. And that's something that's been lacking in the Islamic world. I think that maybe that may be by the maybe by the fact that you've conquered your not you but the, your history is involved with conquest and conversion by force. You think that may be an issue? I, I mean, that, that that could be that could it be. It causes an identity crisis, my friend. That's what happens. I mean, even even during the, even during the prophetic times, a lot of Jews who claimed they. They, they, they became Muslims. They said it just by word while still holding their beliefs. So later on, if they become the rulers of Saudi, like actually now bin Salman and his family, they're all originally Jewish. They're all from the line of Jews. So it's not surprising how they're acting. But, maybe but also is, historically, but you should know that, that Jews existed in Saudi before Muslims did. Yeah, that's not, of course they did. My, uh, so what's, what's the problem with a Jew being the king of Saudi Arabia? The problem is, is when you claim to become a convert of Islam and follow the Prophet's word and kill Shias because they believe in a different Imam, when you have such conviction of Islam, to yeah, but kill Sunnis, your Sunnis, Sunnis or Shia, Shias also kill Sunnis all over, all over the Arab world. Where, where and when, where and when, brother? Us, the, just a quick. This is a, it's a constant loop of violence, brother, that happens it's everywhere not, in the Arab world. You're, you're aware of it. There's, it's, it's been happening for hundreds of years. It's that there has been Shia are, are oppressed, brother. We, we, there is no Shia led wars against Sunnism. You go to Afghanistan, Shias are being burned and killed in their mosques. You go to Saudi, if you say you're a Shia supporter, you get put in jail and killed. You go to uh, Egypt, it's the same thing. Look, Muhammad, my, my, uh, the phone I'm streaming on has 5%, so I gotta, I gotta end the stream no before. Problem. But no look, problem. we're gonna do, we'll continue this. It was just a good conversation. We'll continue, we'll continue. We'll continue this. All right, thanks, brother. Thanks for calling. Take care. Uh, interesting turn of events with Muhammad. I think he realized maybe he was making me too much money. He was like, let me tone this down so the Zionist doesn't get cash. Or maybe he actually wanted to turn a, a, a new leaf. I just want to give context though that before this conversation with Muhammad, and it's not to say anything bad about him because I know he's watching, but he did send me multiple death threats uh, of like, come to the border of Hezbollah in Lebanon. I'm going to send people in Palestine to attack you. So just to be fair, I don't trust the guy. He's still a piece of shit in my eyes. But maybe there can be an element to work on. You know, he was he was sending me death threats for uh, the, the like the last time we had a stream. But I also, to be fair, I rallied him I rallied him up quite a bit with raising money in his name. Barack was here dropping fifty shek, fifty shek. Mars Mello dropping us two ninety nine or one ninety nine for Barack. Talon Barack from Alina two two pounds and VB Indiana. Thank you, Muhammad, for speaking civilly, guys. One hundred and thirty four dollars on stream. We managed. 
to hit a peak of 400 people. I'm so excited for what's to come. Will we hit a thousand soon? It would be crazy to have a thousand people on stream at some point. Anyways, I posted a video on Instagram that's doing really well and my phone's blowing up, so I gotta go. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you for watching. I wanna take one more time to shout out this amazing um, Passover Haggadah. Um, this is to honor the hostages who are right now hostage in Gaza. Please click this link, buy an Haggadah. This is the last night that you'll be able to do it with a hostage forum. You're gonna be using my personal link to support the hostage forum who has supported my channel. And tomorrow, there's a video on the red heifer coming out. Please, please, please take a look at it. Watch it. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, I'm doing it with Corey, Gil Corey Gilschuster. It's a collaboration effort. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you so much. Thank you all for the amazing, immense amounts of support today. Love you guys. Goodbye, Clats.